Oh, that's gorgeous, that. Aye, when you're when you that pal, it's gorgeous. <laughs> is that the one that you turn the white stuff upside down? And... <laughs> uh, no, this is a weapon of mass destruction or ass <laughs> destruction, whatever kind of, you know, tickles your fancy. Good evening, everybody. I know, you caught you call his mid-conversation. <laughs> Guess what? What? It's Friday, bitches. Yay! Welcome. Yes, Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. And as you see, we have a very special bitch with us this evening. We do. Mr. Oh. Solom Reviews, would you care to introduce yourself to our lovely audience? I'm sure everybody knows who I am. I'm Mark from Solom Reviews. Hello. Welcome, my darling. We're so excited, right, because the bitches has been going on going over three years, as you know. And this is the first time, other than like we charity cast, that we'll have a bunch yeah, of no. show with you. So it's very exciting. I mean, we've been, we've known each other for all these years, and I've never actually casted with you. I know it's awesome, but we promise we'll be gentle. Okay, so <laughs> welcome everybody. Thank you for coming and joining us again, as you always do. You support us every single Hi, week. Irish. I hope everybody has had a great week. We have no M tonight because M and Chris are away to see Kill Switch Engage. I know, Jammy so, Batch is the pair of them. They're away musicking it tonight. Mm. I know. Musicing it and alcoholing it, so I'm sure they'll be having a great night. So I hope they enjoy themselves. So hey Mo, hey Mo. So who have we got in? Right, hold on. I need to put the gaggies on for this. Oh yes. Okay, so we have Mo. We have the wonderful Village Vapor. We've got Timmy. We've got Mike's next. We have our ordinary bitch Jules Mama. We have UK Andy. We've got Dog. Hello, beautiful. We've got Isid. We've got Dion. Uh, who else have we got? Mr. McKeesmo, JP. We have uh, Rog Vapes in. Welcome, Gav. Nice to see you in with us live, pal. Um, who else do we have? We have Mobro. We've got Irish. Our lovely UK troll. Andy's in. Pasty's in. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Our beautiful, our beautiful honorary bitch, Jules, is in the house. Hello, Jules, my darling. He likes it rough, undercover BFG. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have... I'm having oh. to I'm having to sign up to Twitch here to just a message in chat. <laughs> <laughs> hi Clark, welcome in. I hope hey, hi Clark. Stevie. I hope everybody as well. I hope you've all had a fantastic week. We're back with you and it's Friday again. That was a quick week. I know here, and do you want to know what's even better? There's less than a week. Till we get to the expo and I get me I get me solo cuddles. I know. I can't wait. I am so don't, looking forward to it. You don't understand, guys. Let's see for us, right? You know that we're we're cuddle monsters, right? But mm -hmm. from the first day that we met Mark, Mark is Mark Mark is so small, he just fits. Do you know what I mean? And he just gives the best huggles and we yep. just love it. Yep. We love it. Oh, I'll never troll you, you scare the shit out of me. <laughs> it is, it's one week till Expo, guys. One week till Expo. Well, this, think about it. This time next week, we'll have had, you know, the first proper day by us yeah. already. You know, we, we'll already be at the premiere end oh, getting shit, oh, working, on, working on Saturday's hangover, you know. <laughs> I know, do you know, we, we're really excited. So before we go any further, right, let, let's cover this. Um... The, because you know that um, at the NEC there was going to be various other things on. There was going to be like the Star Trek convention and there was going to be Sexpo. Now you covered this in your show last night, Mark, that Sexpo yeah. has been cancelled. Which we gutted. Oh, we're, we're devastated. Mm. Uh, I was looking. I was, we were seriously <laughs> looking forward to that. Well, I wanted to see some of the sites of who was going to be staying in the hotel with us. That's what I was looking forward to. But however. I mean, so you imagine what that that night would be like at Premier Inn. <laughs> It'd be epic, wouldn't it? <laughs> vaping, vaping trekkies with a dildo stuck to their head. It would be very interesting. <laughs> anyway, because of that, the prices in the Premier Inn have totally dropped, guys. So mm. if you already have a booking for the Premier Inn, go on to the website and rebook because Brew and Bunny have saved over £100. Mm -hmm. San and I have saved over £100. We're now able to book stay the Sunday night, which we wouldn't normally do. So we're staying and coming back up the road on the Monday because of the price drop. 
So it's worth it. And if you haven't booked already and you're still looking for somewhere, then there's rooms available now, which weren't available before. So definitely go on and have a look. Hey, Dion. This is why the expo might be a bad idea for me. Gail would scare me sober on it. I'm not scary, Irish. I don't know why you get this. I really don't. You've yeah, got to be scared of me unless you piss me off. Our little, our little Mark has found Twitch and hey. has now typed in chat. So, you know, you see that follow button just up at the top of the screen there? You might want to click that as well. Good man. <laughs> I'm all new. I'm all new. <laughs> I know, so... I, th I think I've made I think I'm there now. Good stuff. We're all organised. So oh, yes, guys, guys, click that picture that Darren has just put in uh, chat. This is proof that Vic is taller than someone. <laughs> oh, blooming neck, how many years ago was that? That was... Um, that was 2016. That was the very yeah. first expo that we met you Yeah. No, so that was 2017. No, 2016. That, you weren't there at that one, buddy. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, was that from the year before? Right, okay. I thought, I, I thought it was the, the one of him and Vic that you got. <laughs> no, that was the first. That was the first. That was the first time that we met. That yeah. was good, that. That was a good expo. That it was. Yeah, I think that was. I think that was only my. How was it? I think that was only my second or, th or third expo. That. Well, that was the second day. That was the first expo we had been to. The first, the very first expo was in the May of that year, two thousand six. Yeah, I was at that one. You were at. Um, and then we we went to the October one, but that's the last October expo mm. we've been to. We don't normally do the October one. So I'm looking forward to this next week. It'll be good. Well, the first one I went to was in May, and it was the first time I ever met Danny MBK. Mm. And it was the first time I ever got recognised as being a reviewer. Yeah. <laughs> Bless him. I'm, I'm really looking forward to next week, just, you know, having all my bitches in one place. I know, it's going to be great. That, that's something that we've not been able to do since Sam's joined us. We've not been able to... You know, have a nice time with all of us together. together because mm. I missed the last. I've missed the last two, so yeah. But yeah, this time all the the whole bitches lineup's going to be there. It's going to be great. Hey, um, True Blue. We're really looking forward to it. Welcome, True Blue. Hope you're well. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about Expo, guys. But before we do, we're going to put our mark on the spot. Yes, we are. So mm -hmm. I thought. Me being me, sitting here thinking, right, what can we do to torment and have mischief? So, <laughs> but we thought, no, do you know, like we get a lot of guests on and we don't often kind of like, because we know you so well, right? Mm. And there's a lot, of, a lot of our viewers that watch your reviews and watch your live shows and that, and they know you very well, but there's things that they won't know about you. So we've got some questions for you. Okay. Right? So... The idea is, guys, you're going to pause before you answer because we're going to let the chat guess what the right answer is with you. See how. Oh, well I like this one. Right. Okay. Okay. So some of them, most of them, are like uh, a one thing or other, and it's what you prefer, right? Mm -hmm. Or what you would want ideally. So the first one is rock or pop. So would Mark choose rock or pop music? <laughs> For those that know him very well, this will be an easy one. Yeah, that'll be a real easy one. <laughs> and the answers are flying in. <laughs> I'm very bright. It's because I've got my second screen on and it's shining on my face. Sorry. Do I answer? <laughs> yeah, go for it. So I like Euro pop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I thought you were going to say Euro trash. <laughs> I'm big into Eurovision Song Contest, really. It's that, really? That's my kind of music. Definitely. So it is. <laughs> yeah, why, why can I now see you doing Gangnam Style down the aisles at Expo? Just... <laughs> They're all shouting, liar. Look. <laughs> hey, Alice. Hey, Alice. Welcome, darling. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> oh, yeah, it could be. <laughs> right, Bunny, if you get this open, you want you joining in? Yeah. Right, go for it then. All right then, next one. 
sweet or savory? What do you guys in chat think? Is he a sweet tooth or is he a savory cracker? <laughs> no savory, sweet, sweet tooth, savory, no mix, mixed here. Mm. I'll give you all a hint, I'm a diabetic. Yeah, <laughs> I knew that, that's why I put this one in. <laughs> savory, he's diabetic, so there you go, Irish nailed it. <laughs> No, I am a sweet tooth. I have got a very, very sweet tooth. Yeah, you like your sweet stuff, eh? Yeah. Especially his wife's dumplings, apparently. Says oh, good no. Lord, Mogro, keep it clean, son. Keep it clean. That <laughs> <laughs> is the bitches, after all. Nah, bollocks to that. It's Friday yeah. night, it's the bitches. Fill your boots, you know. <laughs> right, next one. Do you prefer films or books? That's a hard one. What do you guys in chat think? Is he a, a movie buff or is he a bookworm? That's cheating. That's cheating, Steve. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Got to pick one, one or the other. Mm -hmm. Films based on books, I see most things. <laughs> <like, laughs> <you're laughs> that's clever. Yes. He's thinking out the box there, isn't he? <laughs> well, I'm yeah, going to let Mobro win. I'm sorry, Mobro's going to win that one. I like yep. films based on books. <laughs> yeah. But if you had the choice, what do you prefer, a book or a, a film? Um, I've got to admit, I'm a film buff, yep. serious film buff, but I do like my books as well. Yeah, I'm I same. do read, read a lot. There's very few films, I think, that have been adapted from books that live up to the actual book for me. Oh, gosh. And the reason for that is simple because there's that much in a book. Mm -hmm. There's also your imagination as well. Absolutely. Mm. Because you will read a character and you Imagine. will have that image in your head of how that character is. So, yeah, yeah a film can never do justice to a book. They can get close. They can yeah. get very, very close. There's a few, there's a few films that I've seen that lived up to the book. The Firm is one. The Firm is a very good adaptation mm. of, of, of the book. Lord of the I, I think, I think, amazing. What I think the worst one I've ever had is Mad uh, Bridges of Madison County. Oh, I know that. Absolutely. Oh, I'm just ever watch that. I mean, let's face it. The book is a thin little paperback. It's not a big book to read. Yeah. But they totally destroyed that film. Clint Eastwood was not the character at that book. No. He just wasn't. He was no, I'm with you on that one. Um, and the, the Jack Reacher. I mean, Tom Cruise is Jack Reacher. He's six foot seven in the books. Tom Cruise is what five foot five or something. And I think he's a bit I mean? taller than me. The guys, the guys, a bit a big mm. big Hulk in the books, and then you know, no. anyway, we digress. Go for it, Bunny. Okay then, so home or abroad? So holidaying, home or abroad? Ooh, that's a good one. Mm. Now this isn't necessarily what you do, it's what, if you had to choose, do you know what I mean? What mm. would be your ideal? Because I know where you go on holiday, you see, so it's difficult for, I was just trying to think. I like that one, yeah. <laughs> Saying that holiday would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> What you mean? We've got Expo. That's your holiday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's my holiday. <laughs> so, jump chance? Go for it. Uh, I'd like to go abroad, but I mainly uh, holiday at home. Whitby. Yeah, so, I do a lot of Whitby. So, go, talking about going abroad, where would be your ideal destination for a holiday abroad? Can I where guess? Would, where Where would you like sell a kidney to go to? Can I guess? Go on then. I would, I would guess the states and in, in the deep south in the states. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, banjo country. Oh yes, definitely. We're <laughs> <laughs> going down to the music states, yeah. in the states. That's where you could yeah. go. Oh, definitely. I would absolutely, you know, Jacksonville, all around that area. Yeah. Love to go down there. Yeah. Interesting. Nashville, Tennessee, Irish the same. Yes, definitely. Hey, Chris, welcome in, darling. Hey, Chris. Um, yeah, no, I get that because I'm the same. Because as you know, I'm a big, big fan of um, on his mind 
his name Robert. I like that one from True Blue. Considering Yorkshire is home, why right, go well, abroad? That's very true. <laughs> yeah, True Blue's got a point there. You do see Yorkshire this God's country, it's beautiful. Cindy says his guess is that Mark would go to Thailand. We now won't know why they call it Bangkok. <laughs> 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 okay, so next one then. Wax <laughs> or shave? What, for myself or somebody else? <laughs> You know you're on the matches. Well, I'm gonna. Am I being asked? Do I like it clean shaven or less nature? Yes. Hi, Emily. Do you go for the seventies porn star look, or do you like it clean and tidy? I like it very clean and tidy. I'm not into that. So, like, you know, fifty grams of Virginia just thrown at it. Right. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Was it a wax or a shave then? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, wax. Definitely. Oh, there we go. See, <laughs> you learn something new on this show every time. <laughs> uh, oh dear lord! <laughs> brilliant, love it. Right, buddy, it's your turn. <laughs> oh, okay. And to bring it out of the gutter again. <laughs> um, I told you we'd go, Jane. <laughs> oh, Alice, thank you very much, darling. You're an absolute star. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I owe you a pint, love. Definitely. But, um, yes. Coming back out of the gutter, direct to lung or mouth to lung? <laughs> That's really easy, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. See, I'm testing chat. I'm testing them to see how well they know you and how well they watch your shows and their reviews. Yeah, yeah this, this is as much a test for you guys as it is for Mark. We're trying to see how observant you fuckers are, you know? See, he says you like it direct to mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, straight in there. Full ball. <laughs> Hi, Sonic. So go for it. Direct to lung. Yeah, I'm a direct to lung. Yeah. yeah. I've never been able to... Ever, I mean, obviously, when I smoked, it was mouth to lung. But ever since I've been vaping, I've never been able to do it. I find it really difficult to go mouth I find I've got to think about it. I have to, but yeah. Is it, is it maybe because um, when you're vaping, you're vaping a liquid, so they, they smoke, for want of a better word, is denser? Is that maybe mm. why? See, I like thick, dense vapour in my mouth all. I really do. I don't like this wispy stuff. I like heard it, it here really first, girls. dense. Just thought I'd let you know. He likes it thick, guys. There you go. You heard it here first. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, next one. This is yours, Gail. Is it? Right, okay. Yep. So if you had to choose where to live, would it be city or rural? Oh, that's going to be interesting. Let's see what they're going to say on that one. I think the shirt gives it away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah, you not. just you just I remind me of an old school country boy. Yeah, I ain't no city boy. <laughs> That's really for, me, for me. It's in between. Hmm. Because I would like, I like, I would like to be rural but close enough to a city. That yeah. It's not a big trek. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So within an hour or so of a city, I would be more than happy if I was out in the middle of nowhere. See, I'm kind of really lucky where I live at the moment. Uh, at the moment, I've lived here nearly for all my life. Um, I live 20 minutes away from Doncaster, which is virgin on a city. Yeah. It's, it's classed as a town, but it's, it's big enough to be a city. Yeah. I'm sort of like 40 minutes away from Sheffield. Right. But I'm also 40 minutes in the late... You're in South the, Yorkshire, aren't you? Yeah, South Yorkshire, yeah. yeah. So I'm in the middle of the countryside here. See, I'm the same. I mean, we live in Cumbernauld, right, which is a town. It's one of the new towns in Scotland. Um, but where we actually live, we're right on a park. 
and we're right in the centre of Scotland. So within 20 minutes, we can be in Glasgow or Edinburgh, or we can be at Loch Lomond mm. and in the Highlands. So oh, yeah. it's perfect, you know, that way, because we can just... Yeah. Hey, we, Gary. Hey, Gary. Welcome, buddy. So, yeah. I like, I, like, I, like, I like what Irish has just said. I can imagine Solo would love a house in a field with a barn converted oh. into a music re- recording studio. That would be my dream. Yeah, I can yes. imagine that. You'd yes, more definitely. Than that, yes. wouldn't you? Thank you for the subscription, Mr. Machismo. Very thank much you. appreciated, darling. Um, thank you, darling. Yeah, so you're next, babe. Mm. So, pet or no pet? Have I got one or haven't I got one? If you had the choice, would you or wouldn't mm. you? So what do you think, guys? Does he have a pet or is it no pets? We're not talking about the seller either, are we? No. 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 <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Mm. Pets, i.e. a donkey or sheep. <laughs> right at the present moment i haven't got a pet but we used to have two dogs and uh, since we lost the two dogs it's been a little bit hard to replace them at the present moment so but uh, we are thinking about it yeah and yes we will be getting the collie oh do you look after eden's dog yeah we do yeah Oh yeah, we look after Collie now and again when they yeah. uh, when they go away and things like that. So yeah. yeah, so Jan gets a little bit of a fix. Also, we've got friends that have got dogs, so they come and stay as well. So yeah, yeah. we love animals, absolutely love yeah. them. So yeah, nice. Okay, next one: petrol or diesel? Hmm. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. See if uh, how many people do know. I know petrol or diesel. Vape and Bruce says he thought Aiden was the pet. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I can just see him petting him, <laughs> patting him in the <laughs> You'd have, need a stepladder, Gail. Yeah. Petrol 100%, diesel, petrol, diesel, petrol, diesel. Ah, see, you mixed. Well, hybrid says true blue. Uh, true blue I'm, I'm, I'm wearing this, I'm wearing this. This should give you a good hint. Mo Bro says loves a V8 lump. Flintstone car, says Sainty. I think, please, yeah, Flintstone car, that's it. <laughs> Ball says diesel for work, petrol for personal. No, I'm a diesel man all the way through. I've got an L200 pickup. Nice. You like your big truck, don't you? Yeah. I've never Jimmy, been into uh, sports Jimmy cars. Says red diesel rocket fuel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I like your American big pickup trucks and things like that. That's my what floats my boat. And- Liz just comes straight in with horse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Liz, babes, how are you? Hey, horses fucking bite, no. <laughs> I love horses. Beautiful animals. Yeah, they are. Yeah, right, go for it, babe. You're next. Mm-hmm. So, steak bake or sausage roll? Ooh, that's a hard one. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, that is a hard one. Mate says an I-200. Do you need a step ladder <laughs> to get in it, Mark? No, I don't. <laughs> I just open the door and run. <laughs> and jump. <laughs> I can just imagine you pulling a wee trampet out from the back. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got, one of those, he's got one of those wee springboard things that you see gymnasts use. <laughs> like those vault things. <laughs> Go on then, steak bake or sausage roll, what would it be? <sighs> mm. uh, I'm going to go sausage roll. Mm. Yeah, roll. Biggest, ma- biggest majority of the people in chat said sausage roll as well. Mm. Sainty says you like a big girthy sausage roll. Oh yes, definitely a big girthy sausage roll. And oh. Timmy says it has to be a sausage roll because Vic ate all the steak bakes. <laughs> this is true. No. This is true. Uh, sorry, Timmy. No, he didn't. I ate them. <laughs> I love a steak bake, mate. Oh, yeah. And it's great because you can buy them now at Iceland. Greg's on. They do the whole range of Greg's. Nice. See, I can't. Yeah. You know, and the sausage rolls as well. They're gorgeous. I can't do them from Greg's. Can you not? Steak bakes. Do you know why? 
They're too hot. Yeah, they're always roasting. I can't eat them. I, I, if I buy a steak bake from Greg's, I have to leave it for an hour before I can eat yeah. it. Zan does that as well. Hmm? He finds his bun, buns his mouth, but it's always too hot. That's the thing, though. You can eat them either hot or cold. They're every bit as good cold as they are warm. Yeah. Do you know something? I'd rather eat one cold. Mm. Um, see, I, I prefer sausage rolls cold. Yeah, I do. I like sausage rolls cold. Yeah. Oh, no, I like my sausage rolls warm. Okay, so next one, back to music. Soul or country? That's a dead easy one. <laughs> yeah, closing the name. Country, yeah. country, country. Come no. on, guys. The clues in the name, guys. It's not. What's his username we're going to say? For fuck's sake, people, soul, says Gary. <laughs> Idiots, <laughs> soul. <laughs> and again, the shirt should give it away, really. Huh? I'm a country guy. Really? Yes. There you go. I See? do like, I've got to admit, I do like a lot of soul, but no, it's not in the name. Yeah, because, you know, were you being into the sort of blues music as much, I actually thought the soul would have been more, right. more I will your thing, you, being a blues I will, fan. I will give you an exclusive then. Do you know why it's called Solo? Go on, yeah, then. Go on then. Right. This is an exclusive, My, guys and this girls. This is an exclusive. Pin your ears back. This is going some back some time. Right. The actual soul part is from when I used to do my one-man band, which is Soul Catcher. That's where it comes from. Ah. And it, what is it? Soul, soul and, and the... home. It was Soul Catcher and his Do For Diddly band. Do For Diddly, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll give you the tale of the Soul Catcher. When I first left school, I started working at a nappy factory. And all it was was packing nappies. There was an old dear there and she was the most hippiest woman I have ever met in my life. And we was paired on either side of a table when we was packing yeah. and we used to chat away all day long listen to radio and that like she used to turn around to me and say you've been here before and she was convinced i was i'd been here before and she started calling me soul catcher did you go to be a little soul catcher and that's where that comes from nice so there you go so you've learned wow well, where the name soul catcher uh, soul home comes from nice and les wants to know was it kids nappies or adult nappies <laughs> Believe it or not, it was children's nappies. <laughs> Just as well. <laughs> Just as well. Okay, Bunny, you're next. So, again, this one is harking back to music again as well. Live or recorded? So, what I mean by that is if you're listening, not playing, if you were listening. I know. Ah, oh, they know me so well. He's an audiophile recorded. <laughs> Quote one, there is nothing wrong with my scrotum. Okay, mm. we'll, we'll get to that bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> recorded I, live. I love <laughs> Live music. Yeah. You love but your music, don't you? I will say I am also a big fan of recorded as well. The reason why a lot of people like a lot of music, especially old music, is one, it's the song, two, it's the lyrics, but also it's the way that it was recorded. Mm -hmm. It was the way that the room was recorded, the way that they used microphones, what amps they used, and the actual room itself that gives you that distinct sound. And I love that. The ambience. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's why so many people are reverting back to vinyl, aren't they, from yeah. um, digital. It's mm -hmm. like, the, the, in digital, remember when digital first came out and like, CDs first came out and took over tapes and uh, vinyl? Do you know what I mean? Everybody just, oh, they sound so clean. And it's, there's, there's none of the crackling and there's none of that. And yet it's went the other way now. People are... I, I listen to a lot of music from the 1930s and 40s. Now you've got to remember when they actually recorded it, then there was in a big tube, there was no microphones, and there was recording it direct to wax. Yeah. 
Pepsi. So it gives you that sound. Robert Jones. Uh, yeah. When you're talking about Robert Johnson, Lan James yeah. Jefferson, all them type of people. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's why that's why I'm, what I mean about it. it's not just the song itself; it's the actual recording as well that gives you that that whole sound. That, I love. It take, that takes you back to the place, and as mm. Bunny said, the ambience, the atmosphere, the the whole thing, doesn't that's it? That's it. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so we've done all the either ors. Want to know? Out of everything, what makes you the happiest? My wife. Oh. <laughs> I like that answer. Me wonder though. For those that are, look, for those of us that have met Mrs. Solo, it's no wonder she's just an absolute gem. She's my best friend, and I'm, when I say she's my best friend, she is literally my best. She's friend. amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. Sandy <laughs> saying, is she sitting right next to you, Mark? No. <laughs> Honestly, she's downstairs, bless her. <laughs> we love you, Jan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Jan's amazing. So following on from that, then, what is your biggest annoyance? What pisses you off the most, in other words? Oh, blooming heck. Have we got all night? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest annoyance? Uh... I haven't got, I have, <laughs> <laughs> Steve says sniff, I want a divorce. <laughs> uh, I think Aiden was about, yeah, our Aiden. <laughs> 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 I haven't got a really big, I've got little ones, little things niggle me. Mm. I, I've got no one thing that, oh, that really, no, it's just little tiny little things that can really wind me up. So I haven't got one. What's yours, Bunny? Just out of interest. What, my biggest annoyance? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apart from him, um, lying two-faced scumbags. Oh, yeah. Lying. Mm -hmm. Lying me, really bad manners. pisses me off. For me, it's bad manners. I can't stand bad manners. Yeah, that winds me up a bit too. It costs nothing to say please and thank you. Mm -hmm. And I can't no, stand yeah. people that, do you know what I mean? You hold a door open for somebody and they just walk through it. They don't even say thank you or... Mm -hmm. I've seen me actually go like that and I've dragged somebody back by the stuff of the neck and put them there and walked through the door myself. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Anyway, so the next one, for you, what is the best thing that has come from vaping? That is going to be really, really easy. The best thing that's come from vaping is the community that I've found. Yeah, I think I that's the same for a lot of us, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I have met so many amazing... In, since I've been... I've been, I've been very... Hi, since 2011. And I have met some Thanks. absolutely amazing people. Really. Vic says, this, Vic says the best thing was meeting him because he is awesome. <laughs> but I Vic, like how everyone Vic, went quiet then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing, he's my cherub. Um, yeah, no, I would agree with you, you mm. know, because we've made some really, really strong friend friendships, haven't we? Mm. You know? I mean, let's face it, we've met people that we would, in any other life, we would yeah. never meet. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I've, I talk to people from all over the world and doing this and doing reviews and things like that has given me that opportunity to meet new people, new ideas uh, from, not just from... Uh, this country from all around the world. Yeah. And I think that's just amazing. I really do. No, absolutely. I agree with you. I mean, the way I see it, the internet, the internet has made the world such a small place compared mm. to what it was. And I mean, it's amazing for me. My brother's in Australia and I can I can sit and have a conversation like this yeah. with my brother, whereas years ago it would be letters and you would be, you would be waiting weeks to get some sort of reply. Mm. And I think it's amazing. There's, there are things about it I don't like. But, you know, that way, I, I don't think it's been, like, the social media thing, I don't think has been great for society, to be honest, in general. But, um, yeah. I think sometimes the pros can weigh out the cons. Yeah, sometimes. Maybe I I'm think, just saying that because I've got teenagers. Mm. <laughs> but, because, because, uh, I mean, we are, I think all of us are of an age where we can remember bombers. when it would cost you an absolute arm and a leg to phone mm -hmm. anything abroad. Yeah. Absolutely. And it would cost you an arm and a leg. 
Well, we have an age where we remember life without the internet, <laughs> without yeah. mobile phones. Yeah. We remember fucking tellies with no remote controls because we were the remote controls. We were the on three <laughs> channels. <laughs> exactly. Get up and change it. <laughs> you need to get up and change it. <laughs> You know, so all of this, I suppose, we have a generation I I just find it amazing. I yeah. really do. I, sometimes it's sort of like you have to sit back and look at it. Well, I mean, we all got us gripes, and yeah, there's loads of things that we can say this ain't good, that that ain't good. But the pros outweigh it definitely for me. Yeah. No, honestly, I I feel the same as you. So, is it you and me, Bunny? Me. Right, go for it. So, following on from the previous question, what do you think is the worst thing to come out of vaping? The worst thing that's come out of vaping? Pod systems. <laughs> Give that man a round of applause. <laughs> She's not going to agree with you. Bloody pod. Shit them. <laughs> we Gary says for him the worst thing was Cheech. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. that was a very yeah, question. yeah, 10 points for Gary there for that answer. <laughs> Oi, Clark, leave my cherub alone. Right, so, final, final question for you then. What is your biggest life's ambition? What is it, you know, on your bucket list? What is the one thing that you've always wanted to do that you want to do? Mm. Me, I'd love to open my own vape shop. Awesome. I, really, I have to really... admit that's something I would like to do as well. Mm. That's awesome. But I would like to open a vape shop, not just as a vape shop. It would be more of a. I know this isn't. I know this just sounds wrong, but it might not be. It's not PC correct. But you know, like a gentleman's bar. Yeah. And not that it would just be only uh, gentlemen. No, I know what you mean. But that kind of an atmosphere, the old fashioned. Um, the old fashioned tobacconist. Right. Think you. that on the vape yeah. side. And then you've got the area where you could sit down, have a coffee. It would be more of a social place. <clears throat> yeah. And then it would be, I, the, you know how you've got it in your head? I'd have it so like, so at night time, it would be open as well. Awesome. Vic, says, Vic says, stop lying. You want to open a strip club? <laughs> well, well, we can always do that. Yeah, uh, you're saying that, and I'm thinking speakeasy. Yeah. Yeah, you've got it. Right. See, yeah, that would be awesome. Mm. That yeah, would so be awesome. something a little bit different. Something, yeah, the, obviously you've got your vape shop side of it, but you've also got the, the community side of it as well. Mm. Yeah. Like the cigar lounges they have. Yeah, in the yeah. Mm. True Blue says pole dancing in a vape shop. I'm there. Mm. <laughs> See, the thing is, though, I would make sure that all the staff was dressed smart as well. Yeah. Period stuff. I think that'd yeah. be amazing. Mm. That would be amazing. Instead of so like you know, dressed like I am now in a vape shop, and you've got some guy blowing type smokes and all. Uh, that. In other words, you, you know, a you'd bit like more, to be like a, a dapper Dan. Yeah, a bit you more know. Peaky Blinder type. You know. Yeah. yeah. That'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Well, thank you very much for answering the questions. I think I've overthought. Good. You've got to admit, I think I've overthought this vape shop, haven't I? <laughs> There's nothing hey, there's that's what ambitions that, and dreams are all about, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> More balls and bow ties style, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. So well done. That wasn't too traumatic, was it? No, definitely not. <laughs> so just to round it all off, we need to know how's your scrotum? My scrotum is fine, thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> that's good. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Check. Yeah, yep, yeah, still there. Welcome to the bitches, that's us. Good. Well done. <laughs> Anybody in chat get any questions for our lovely Mark? And <laughs> keep it clean. <laughs> yeah, Timmy says he's got the suit, he's gonna apply for the job. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be something a little bit different, more of an event to go there. I think that's what I've always said, you know, when you can hear about um high street shops are shutting down. Yeah. Because of obviously obvious reasons, you've got the internet and things like that, it's cheaper to buy. I think uh, high street shops now are going to have to start being a little bit more imaginative, a yeah. little bit more personal, a little bit more an experience when you go to that shop. Yeah, absolutely. I think it... I, 
I think one of the things that needs to happen is that um, any high street shop um, has to have staff that uh, not only vape, but know what they're doing. Mm. There are so many vape shops where, you know, you walk past them and half of the staff are standing outside puffing up a storm and with their cancerous little hob- hobby that they have. And then whenever they come in to serve you, then you ask them a few questions about the device you're wanting to buy and they haven't a clue. Mm. You know, there's no point hiring somebody for a vape shop that doesn't know what a vape device is or what it's capable of doing. From my experience of talking to certain people, quite a few vape shops don't want you to know. Why? This is true because they want, they want things to burst so that you'll come back, spend more money. Well, it's the actual no. people that they're employing. I would, they don't want I you to much, know. I would much rather have staff that are properly trained, properly mm. experienced in what they're doing. Um, yeah. Because in a business like that, you rely on the repeat custom. And if you give your customer a good level of service, of course, they're going to come back. Whereas yeah. if you sell them something and uh, don't explain to them properly how it works and they end up either blowing it up or damaging it in some way. And, you know, you can't either fix it for them or you know, help them out along the way, they're not going to come back. They're going to say, oh, no, don't bother going there. The customer service is shite. Well, you know, I look at it this way. your customers come back, and that wealth of experience is a good way to start with that. I look at it this way. A vape shop should be exactly as straight like a chemist. You wouldn't now go to a chemist and then not expect them to know what they're talking about. Exactly. And it's on, it's, all right, yes, they're on a slightly higher level than uh, a vape shop, but it should still have that same mentality. Yeah. You're going into a shop that's selling e-liquid, selling coils, that they need to know exactly what they're selling. See, I personally think, right, if, say, for example, you work in a cafe or that, you've got to have your food handling certificate. I think it should be the same for vape shops. I yeah. think there should be a, an industry standard where people have to do a basic test to know about the Rome's law, to know about the battery safety, to be able to work in that shop. And I think that would be a really simple way of regulating things to stop these fannies and idiots. Do you know what I mean? You, the new vapors are going into shops and they're trying to sell them mix. I think that you know that would be a, a good way to regulate it to try and stop things happening like that. I always remember I went to uh, a vape shop in Rotherham. I think it was about two or three years ago, maybe. Nipped in, I needed an ohms reader because mine had packed in. Walked up to the very attractive young lady that was there and got to admit she was very attractive. And I went up to her and I says, can I have an ohms reader, please? She goes, what's one of them? What? Mm. Oh, no. No. Mm. And I couldn't help her. I goes, what? <laughs> what ohms reader? And then walked out. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As an experienced vapor, you don't want to be spending your money in that kind of place. Anyway, I will be back in two seconds, guys. I need to go and get myself a drink. But isn't that the same as when you go to Expo and you've got all these models that know absolutely nothing? Oh, on that thought, hold that thought. I'll be back in a minute. (laughs) I know a lot of the uh, girls that are hired at Expos are really just leaflet droppers. Mm. So in all honesty... The ones that are just handing out the paperwork really don't need to know a hell of a lot. But when you go to a booth, yeah, um, either to sample the liquids or to uh, have a look at some of the hardware, you at least like to think that the people you're speaking to at the other side of that counter at least have half a clue what they're doing. Yeah, totally. I mean, let's face it, they're, they're supposed to be... They're, they're promoting to be their goods. in the industry that they're there to exhibit. Yeah. You know, and there's no point doing that if you don't have a clue what you're doing. Mm. But also, I look at it this way. As a company, <clears throat> I want to show off my wares to the best of its ability. So mm-hmm. you obviously, as a company, you would think that they would make sure that the person that's actually promoting and selling their goods knows everything about it. Mm. It just makes, for me, logic sense for your company that you want to give the best. It's like I've always said with the uh, review products. Mm-hmm. They are sending uh, reviewers a product that they're saying, that's our best. That's the best thing we've made. There you go. And that's the way I look at it. And that's how it should be exposed. Yeah. Should, that this is our juice line. This is the best we can make. 
have a go. Right. Go back to the fucking the tits and ass on display, right? So I've got a kind of a mixed thing on this, right? I'm not that all that feminist, oh no, they shouldn't be doing this, they shouldn't be doing that, right? I think though there has to be a balance. Because at the end of the day, it's basic marketing 101. Sex sales always has sales, it always will sell. Hmm. And as long as these females that are doing that are happy and they're making the choice to do that for themselves, then I don't see an issue with it. Hmm. What does annoy me is that they're employing people who don't vape and don't have the knowledge. Hmm. So there are plenty of vapors out there. Can they not find the good looking models that vape and have the knowledge that hmm. can bring the business in rather than just using their tits and ass that they can have a wee bit of intelligence about them as well. Hmm. I think that would yeah, that's, you know, cross that, that barrier and that gap. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying just as, as you went off there for a minute, Gail. Um, the, the, the promo girls that you see just walking around handing out leaflets in all honesty, they really don't need to know much because all they're doing is giving you a bit of uh, a bit of paper with some information about the company and about the juices and whatnot. And all they're doing is basically handing you that bit of paper and saying, oh, you can find us on stall such and such. That's fair enough. But when you go to that stand, mm. you, you know, the people behind that counter should be the ones with the knowledge. And a lot of times, half of them don't have a clue. They're just, they're really just there to try and sell as much as they can to make as much money as they can. They're, they're employed, they're employed by agencies <clears throat> or whatever, just for weekend work, aren't they? To, mm. to, yeah. To that, that irritates me, it does irritate me. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a red-blooded man and I like looking at a nice, pretty girl, but this, I think there's a time and a place for it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what annoys me, though, is that they don't have the eye candy there for the women. They did the one year where they had the men in the kilts, right? Yes, but there's just, you're talking. Mm. The vape industry is very male-dominated, as we it all is. know. You know? And, you know, I just think, well, what about all the female vapors? We, we don't just want pink mods or things that look like a lipstick or a, a perfume bottle. Mm. You know, that's not, that doesn't encompass all females, but why not have some eye candy mm. for the women that are there? Why not have, you yeah, know, the other totally. thing on it? Yeah, Oh, I totally agree with you on that one. But we, it is very male-dominated. We mentioned just Peachy Vicks now squirming in my corner. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, more just Pandora because just Peachy has a wee bit more class about her, shall we say? Well, just Peachy doesn't have to Photoshop her images before she uploads them on the Instagram, does she? Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's the kind of thing that I mean. You know, people that you know what I'm trying to say. Mm. I don't have any. I mean. It's, it's going, to, it's going to be like that. It's not going to change. But the thing is, though, even as a, as a bloke, is it necessary? Is the whole thing necessary at a vape shop? No, it's not. It's not, is it, really? It's not, but when you think about it, Mark, how many companies are actually within this expo that are mm. all fighting to make their products stand out? Mm. So they do it to try and make the product stand out from the rest. That's the, it's the marketing thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I don't think, to be honest with you, from from the people I talk to, and mainly obviously they're lads, most of them are not interested. They're interested. They want to go and see the products. Absolutely. They're yeah. not bothered about the girls. Absolutely, I agree. You know. Um, so, so like it's so it's sort of like a case of is it really genuinely necessary? I mean, it's like the music. I mean, don't get me started on the music because honestly, that drives me whappy. Don't I am so relieved you know, to see that the area, the media area where we're going to be, is <clears> really <throat> far away from the stage. You, 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 see, you know how much the noise affects me. Yeah. I mean, it exposed me. I had to leave on the Saturday at one o'clock, and Dan had to take me back to the hotel because the noise was so much. Mm. It made me ill. I had to go to the hotel. Well, it makes me. I know. I know. This sounds really crazy. I go deaf when it comes to music. What happens is when people are talking, if there's music on in the background, my ears go to the music. It's just one of them things that happens if I'm in a pub or anything like that. I can be stood next to people talking, but if there's music, my ears automatically go to the music. I could, yeah. It's just one of them things. The problem that I have with Expo, with all the music going off, I feel almost claustrophobic and I end up having a panic attack. 
<laughs> because and, it is that bad. Do you know what I think the problem is there? Um, the uh, individual, <laughs> the individual um, booths are playing all their own music. So you're maybe standing at one booth and it's playing music and the other three or four that are around it are also playing their own mm. music and it's all different. Yeah, yeah. So you can't really tune in on one and it's just mindless yeah. noise. Now, the NEC being the size it is, if they want to have music there, why not put it over the Paul's intercom mm. system, ban, you know, actually stop the individual vendors from playing their own music and just mm. have it over like a an assisted tannoy system like you normally get in shopping centers or something like that why not have it like that they have the ambient music and that way it's not going to be as intrusive because the installs are not going to be competing with each other to see who can turn their boombox up the loudest mm. well me and steve went to the hemp and cbd expo at nec the other week yeah and that's what they did and really was it, better? it was brilliant yeah honestly see, well why can't they do that for the vapor expo then the, you know, honestly, just, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but nasty just are the worst for it because they are forever, you know, um, in competition to see if they can be the loudest stall there. Mm. Well, we went to the uh, uh, well hemp and uh, CBD expo, and it was mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant. I tell you one thing: our expo could learn a lot from theirs. Right. You could walk up to every. There were no uh, sexy women. I mean, there were some women that were dressed really, really nice, but there were none, you know, short skirts and legs up to here. There were none of that. Very, very well done. You so could no go to any, slashing the fanny at you. No, you. none of that. There were some oh, really like, like nicely dressed women. Don't get me wrong, but you could also walk to every single booth and have a proper conversation with them. Mm. Yeah. And that was like a much more there. professional approach than you would see. Yeah. And see, it was I like brilliant. to be able to hear the person I'm having a conversation with mm. because I have a, a partial hearing loss as it is in my right ear. So whenever all that music's thumping like that, it is very hard for me to concentrate on what the person's saying in front of me. Mm. And, and I'm actually, having a conversation with someone I like to be able to hear who I'm talking to. It actually frustrates me to the point where I get angry. Mm -hmm. When, you know, you're trying to communicate communicate with somebody and all you've got says boom 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 in background because my head automatically as you all know I live with the constant migraine so my head automatically goes in time with the bass yeah. no matter where I am do you know what I mean it'll start pump, bumping you look, and it's like you look at the amount of times Gail you know that we've all been to expo and we've been sitting in the chill out area which is supposed to be the quiet zone and there's the music's just been thumping and there's maybe a group of us sitting around the table and you know we could be less than two feet away from each other, but we're having to shout at each other like we're at opposite ends of the yeah. stadium. So by the time you're leaving in the afternoon, you can't speak. You've lost your voice because you've been shouting so much. Absolutely. Mm. You know, See, and it's, it's got That's awful. why I think, you know, looking at the layout, I mean, we have the layout, but we could, let's talk about Expo then, right? Could, Brew, could you put the, the layout for next week's Expo up on the cast, if possible? Yes, the um, floor plan. Yeah, the floor plan. Um, because I was really pleased to see the way that they've set it out this time. I think looking at, I was looking through it last night and looking at some of it, I think that they've maybe taken on board some of what was happening um, at the German one that mm -hmm. they visited. Um, but they've got the Modders Gallery. Now, I know a lot of the Modders Gallery, it's coil makers and things, but I'm really looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. that. But I'm really pleased to see how far away the media area is from the stage and from everything else yeah, as well. It's not, it's not right on the stage this time, so it would be nice to... That's it. Well, when, the, when we was at the media, uh, especially I think it was on the Saturday, and they started doing the stuff on the main stage, even in the media area, we couldn't hear each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was that loud at the yeah, actual uh, main stand. It was. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it was, and as I say, I get I get really agitated and, and angry. And I mean, you, you all know that I suffer from blackouts. Do you know that? I mean? So mm. the louder the music is, the more it affects me, and I can black out more and more, which ruins my whole weekend. To be perfectly mm. honest, because it's so embarrassing. And also, you, you've got to think as well when you go to Expo. I mean, especially if it's your first one, it exactly. can be a little bit overwhelming. Exactly, because it is that big. Mm -hmm. And it's so like you, you you walk in there, you go through that little tunnel, 
and you walk in and you see the whole expanse yeah. of it all and yeah. that alone is enough for your senses to so like wow yeah, I, I still remember my first one walking in through the door that morning and you know um there was a few people had warned me sort of what to expect but I was not expecting it on such a grand scale you know and when I walked in the door and seen the size of the place I actually stopped me dead in my tracks and I just stood there with my chin hitting the floor it was like <laughs> starstruck you know yeah. but I mean, it's an it's an it's an absolutely amazing experience. It really mm -hmm. is, especially your first time. Especially your first time for the actual expo itself. Absolutely. And it's so like, I'm in heaven. <laughs> There's all these things, yes. and then you're so like, where do I go? What do I do? What what? And then you've got this bang bang music, and it's so like, now get rid of it. For me, I remember, you know, like every year. You, you go to Expo, and for me, one of the best parts of it is seeing Expo virgins in their face when they first walk in. I remember Jules and Stevie when they were their first Expo, and Zan and I were trying to explain it to them, and when they came in, and, and they, they were like that. And for me, that's, that is so much fun, do you know that way, when you see these new papers and their, their first experience, it's like mm. wanting to get seen to come to an Expo, because I know that you will just love it, you know, that way, because it, even if you only do one, it's an experience worth doing once. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So I put a thing out in the group just to say if anyone did any questions, because I know quite a lot of people in our, our chat have been to Expo on a lot of occasions. Alice, it's in the chat, she was there in May, mm -hmm. but she was too scared to come up and say hello to me, apparently, so... There'll be, none of that. there'll be none of that next week, Alice. Yeah, you get yourself over with us, darling. Yeah. So, Timmy was asking, what are you most looking forward to about Expo weekend? Now, he did put, we all know it's the Expo, but we now know that the Expo's cancelled. So, mm -hmm. what are you looking forward to and what do you want to treat yourself to? Is that to all of us or? All of us. Well, well I'm, first. I... I am not going with any specific product in mind uh, to buy. I'm just going to wait and see what catches my eye. I'll do I'll do my usual, what I always do every year when I go to the expo the first day. I walk in the door, I do a lap and have a walk around and have a wee scout to see if there's anything catches my eye and then I'll go back to it later. Um, but yeah, the main thing for me going to the expo is getting to see all you lot again. It's just, I, I'm just going for the three die piss up. You do realize this, right? <laughs> there we go. That's me. Yeah. And me, I'm not going out for anything. Oh, uh, Vic, Vic, uh, I'm going to be making some brownies. Do you want me to bring you some? That's, that's a given. Don't be silly even asking them. Is that given? <laughs> Yeah, I made them brownies last year, reached to put them into a little box and everything for them and reached them to him. And he was sitting there for a minute or two and he was sort of tapping and, the the box. and then he says, I'll be back in a bit. And away he went and disappeared. I think he had the fucking brownies out before he even got out of the lift. I don't know, because he came back down and he had a chocolate crumb in his mouth. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Yeah, the brownies got millard. So you're not going for anything specific, Mark? No, the only thing that I'm... Because I'm a veteran of going to Expo now, yeah. uh, not just at the Birmingham one, I mean, I've uh, done the London one as well. Um, it's you guys. It's meeting up with friends. Isn't it? And uh, that is the biggest thing for me. Also meeting up with sort of like people that I've worked with, you know, the vendors and things like that. It's yeah. nice to sort of like, because we spend so much time uh, either on a VC or just pure email. Yeah, your messenger. You don't actually talk to people face to face, so that is what it's for me now. Yeah. It's it's meeting up with friends. It's meeting up with vendors more than it is the actual product. I think for us, I mean, when I talk about us, and I mean us personally, right? Because I mean, we have been friends because we were part of the UK network way back. Mm -hmm. So I think for us, it's always been about the VUK and casters and reviewers and that all getting together and being that community. And over the years, that's expanded out and expanded out to include a lot of other people. So it is, it's very much about the social thing, about the people that, you know, you've built these friendships mm -hmm. with for a period of time. Um, I think, though, more so 
this time than any others, I think, for Bonnie and I, because the bitches, because we now do reviews, which we didn't do for a long time. Um, I think Expo in itself, because the three the three bitches will be together, which we haven't mm. managed to do since we, as Bunny said, we, um, came on and joined us. Um, I think the networking thing on the business to business day will be a big part for us this time, where it maybe hasn't been before. Um, but yeah, it's 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 about the the socialising. It's about you know like meeting up with your friends, meeting mm. people, to watch a show. All that part of it, which you know, is the good part, isn't mm. it? That's that's the good it's, part. That's, that's the, that is the main the part of yeah, the expo of doing this. Just a, an extra bonus. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I'm definitely going to get myself my own battery charger because I'm sick and tired of Zans. It nearly got launched out the fucking door the other day. Can't work the fucker. I need something that's really simple that I can just can put my batteries in. And it tells me that they're charging and what the voltage is. Right. But I mean, none of this flashy fucking lights at me and all that nonsense. Just fucking charge my batteries for me and get yeah, uh, some new batteries, and other than that, will be fine. Vic says for him, it's about making shit vlogs with the camera pointing up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. And you know, I mean, for me. You know, we get to spend a few days with everybody. I get to spend some time with Vic, do you know that way? And usually I'm bossing them about, but I didn't do that in May, did I? I left them to his own devices. Um, but yeah, no, it's, and it is, it's fun. It's, mm-hmm. it's so... Um, it means that we, we are such a big family. Yeah. yeah. And we all look after each other, and it's, it's brilliant, honestly. Absolutely. Well, I mean, way back, way back, you all called me the mum. Of the UK end, didn't you? Yeah. He's all nicknamed me um, the mama of the, the network. Do you know what I mean? And I think that was just because obviously I started with the baking thing and, and, mm. and the food thing and bringing and stuff. And that's kind of grown as well. And now we have Jules and Stevie who help mm. out with that. And everybody else tends to muck in with it as well. So, mm-hmm. But there will be baking there. I'm going to be making scones. Andy, some um, um, shall be getting one this time before he falls. I'm bringing over. brownies. Bunny's bringing brownies. I'm also making some Empire Biscuits because Bunny loves the lemon Empire Biscuits, so I've said that I'll, I'll make some of them. So the thing is, so come to Expo, you don't need to bring anything. <laughs> but what we would say is... Oh, and uh, Darren has just reminded us about uh, storming round to the takeaway to correct an order. Okay, that's a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another story. <laughs> Well, they should have got it right in the first place and then they wouldn't have seen this, the wrong side of me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Chris, uh, I spoke to Vic. Vic's told me a good charger to get, so... Um, and I've had a wee look and a wee scout about, so I think I know what I'm going for. Um, but I'll, I'll see what's there when we get down to Expo. As long as it's fanny-proof, then I'll be all right. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a 6 by EFIS charger and I've had it for about what... Three years. It was an EFS charger that we had. Mm. I had a two bay and I had a four bay. And when my son and his girlfriend started vaping, I gave them the two bay. Mm. And my friend, she stopped smoking and started vaping a wee while ago and um, went from pods and kind of stick things, lipos, to 18650s. So I gave her my four bay to make sure that. She she was yeah. all, all set. So Dan and I have just been using his six bay between us. But mm. it, his way, in, and then we've got this new one, and I fucking hate it. I hate it. No matter what I do, I put the batteries in, and the lights fucking flash at me. And oh, mine's, mine's really, it. really simple. Really oh, simple. Fucking, you just put the batteries in, and it it go it ju- it does flash, but sort of like to tell you what each battery is doing. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Oh no. This one, I mean, it, it, it flashes, it shows the battery's charging, but if you put the battery in like a millimeter out of the way it's supposed to be in, all the lights flash and none of them charge. Oh, no. oh it fucking drives me potty. So, yeah. yeah, I'm going to get myself a new battery charger and, and do all that. So, is there anybody in chat that this will be their first expo? If we get any expo virgins, we like expo virgins, don't we? Mm. We do. We did say that rather sinisterly. <laughs> mm, we did. That's mischief. That's mischief. Mm. That's mischief right there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Bunny likes popping people's cherry. That's what it is. <laughs> Expert cherry popper, me. Um, 
Never been to any expo, Chris. Chris, you're not far from us. You should try and come. Gav, maybe next year, Timmy, my first Friday one, but third day expo. Nice, right. Timmy. I wasn't nervous till just now. Alice, you don't need to be nervous, darling. Just come. You don't need to bring anything. Just come. Be yourself. Oh, come yeah. over. Just tell me who you are and I'll just cuddle you. And then mm -hmm. everything will be fine. I think name tags could be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, here's one thing for you guys, right? Don't come up and say, hi, I'm John. Hi, <laughs> I'm Tracy. Yeah, so you have to tell us your, your name on the chat that you use because if you come up and you say hi I'm Alice then I know your name's Sarah right but if you come up and you say hi I'm Alice then I'll know who you are straight away sometimes you know you'll find the same hey, you know, it's like yeah. hey darling how you doing um, uh, JP's coming for the hugs yay oh, there good we one go. JP you can't beat a hug. a hug a hug makes everything better mm. just ask yeah. the same the first time I we met seen the poor bugger I jumped out the motor and ran at him and cuddled him. He was like a rabbit in the headlights. He was like that. <laughs> um, Aren't you guys having an expo up in, is it Glasgow in February? We are. There's going to be the first um, big kind of Scottish It's expo. about time. Isn't it? So it really it's is. the last weekend in February. So it's going to be really, really good to actually have something based here. Because mm. not everybody can afford to go. To Birmingham, it's a lot of money for the weekends, mm -hmm. as you know. Um, so yeah, it'll, be, it'll be good to have something here. Emily says, okay, must remember to introduce myself to Gail or she won't know who I am. And Liz says, I'm not telling you my name, so fuck off. <laughs> Her name's Megan, because she's so totally. She comes up to a bit there, isn't Aww. <laughs> she gives good hugs, though, Mark. She gives good hugs. You're not going to be let out of my sight anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, just hope some of the bigger vendors go to the Glasgow one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It will be, it will be good. And I think it's about time that we had something mm. up here. Um, even for like, people that live in the north of England. Yeah. You know, that way, it, it's, it'd be easier for them to come up to Glasgow than it is to go down to, to Birmingham. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Alice, you don't you don't get allowed to be shy with me or Bunny. No, no, no you don't. You don't need to be. You don't Mark need to be shy with me. Mark will tell you the first time we met. God love, God love them. <laughs> the first time we met, eh? Mark's poor wife. She was here. And I was like, oh, hello, come in, and I cuddled her. And I sat her down, and I was feeding her cakes. <laughs> yeah, blow my neck. Yes, please, surprise me. Honestly, you'll be fine. You will literally be fine. Yeah, we'll look after you, babe. Don't worry. Honestly, don't. And and th this is the whole point, because as we know as well, there are a lot of people within the vaping community who suffer from mental health issues or social anxiety or depression, things like that. Yeah, I I'm one of them. <laughs> to it, right? So we know that. So, you know, there's no way that any of us would make you do something or... or deliberately want to make you uncomfortable if anything you know we just want to welcome you in and and make things as comfortable and make your expo as good as it can possibly be for you because for us as as martin and bunny say for us we do the expos all the time so for us that's the important bit now it's not about you know what you're going there to buy mm -hmm. what happens is we end up looking after people we do because yeah, we look after, do, we've we look after people, times. we look after we look after their bags and stuff if mm. they want to go for a pee or whatever. And you yeah. know, we do we just we all club together as I think you know that whole saying that you can pick your friends but not your family. I think that's bullshit because I think I've picked a pretty good family to be a part of. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh totally. You know, I got quite a few hugs from Soul Rome and me. Yes, she did. See, it's it's all fun, isn't it? And it's all yeah, I I just I have to I have to get my solo snuggles. I have to because oh, I definitely. missed them. I've missed them at the last two expos, you know, because I've not been there. So I'm looking forward to meeting Steve as well because I've never met him yet in person. So I'm looking forward to meeting Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he's serious, little and large. <laughs> <laughs> he towers over. So it's me. like you and Aiden then. Oh no, he's taller than Aiden. Fuck off, seriously. Yeah. What was Aiden? Why, Why, Why do you think we call him BFG? Oh Why do you think we call him BFG? 
Yeah, the big friendly giant. Oh well, my god. Your son's six foot seven, you know, and six foot eight, so I'm used to biggies. Yeah. So that doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we know what you meant. <laughs> I mean, I'm prepared. used to looking up at everybody, so... Don't you worry about Emily. I'll be looking after her, Liz. I'll be looking after her. Um, no, so I'm really looking forward to it. And we're now, we're now staying Sunday night as well. I'm coming home on the Monday because of this price drop in the hotel. So it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to a few days away from home and just a break yeah. from the norm. Do you know that way as well? I just a wee change of scenery. Yeah. We change of scenery. Yeah, That's what I'm looking so forward everything. to. But no, oh, we fly so. we fly in. We're our flight lands really early on the Thursday morning. We're going to be there um Hi, eight, Tina. Tina. Welcome in. But uh yeah, we're um we're landing about eight o'clock on the uh on the Thursday morning. So we have a few hours to kill before we can go and check into the hotel. So we're going to go and see the you know, uh going to hop the train and head into New Street and go and take it down around the city while we're there, you know, kill a couple of hours. I'm sending her to do the shopping for me to get my milk and decaf coffee from the hotel room. Yep. Yeah, well, that's so that I'm why we're going into town. In the morning. Yeah, so we're going to, because, like, me and Darren tend to be, like, late night snackers and stuff, and usually the kitchens are closed in the hotel at that time of the night, so we're just going to stock up on, like, crisps and chocolate and shit. And Yeah. For those that haven't stayed in the Premier Inn before and that are maybe booked in this time, a lot of us have the, the buffet breakfast in the morning. Yes. And oh, there's the a reason breakfast. that we do it. Oh, my God. We do yeah. the breakfast because it's a buffet breakfast. You can eat as much as you want. Um, and it's, it's what, is it a tenner or something ahead? Mm. Something uh, like that. Something like that. It's like yeah. 9 It's or as much as you want. Um, mm. But we all find that by doing that, it fills you up for the whole day and you don't then have to pay expo prices for like lunches and food and all that sort of thing. What are you on about? Jan were making sausage butties and well, taking it to expo. Well, she was, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, we were swiping the fruit and everything the last time I was there. We were we were making the bananas and oranges and stuff and, you know, putting them into our bags and taking them with us. Yeah. You know, and yeah. uh, what was the, the, the wee croissants and the pan of chocolate and stuff like that. We, we were, like, scooping them and putting them into bags and taking them over with us. But it's definitely worth doing you know, that way because it does, it, it fills you up for the whole day. Um, mm. But you don't, well, I don't know about it's, you it's guys, expensive but... to eat, isn't it? Mm. And, and they actually mm -hmm. expo. I tend to not eat, though. I, I drink a lot, but I don't eat much when I'm at expo. I normally saw like once we've finished, I get home, you know, I get home, I get to yeah. Premier Inn, then I'm hungry. Yeah. It's funny because at home, I eat once a day. I eat, mm. I usually eat about now. I eat at night time and have one meal a day and that's it. Um, but when I'm at Expo, I really enjoy getting up and having the breakfast and then mm. having dinner at night. Do you ever notice that when you're it's like I'm on for, for some reason, I've got an appetite when I'm away, yeah. but I never have when I'm at home. I was exactly the same last year. Whenever I went, to, whenever I went to Spain um, in September last year, and I I don't normally eat a breakfast or anything. I'm not a morning person to be honest. If I've got coffee, I'm good. But normally, you know, when I go away on holiday, you can't film me. I just fucking I'm I'm like Pac Man. I go through and eat everything. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so can I? Vicky, yeah. you still in like chat? It, like it, like it, like it. <laughs> I noticed that Vic made a comment that the his Kelpie RDA mm -hmm. prototype will be at the H Pro stand waiting for him at Expo. Oh, yes. nice. Very so I'm looking forward to seeing that. I want, yes. to, I want to get a wee look. Yes, I'm very excited about this. Um, yeah, because... Tina, I'm exactly the same as you, darling. I don't do mornings either. If you wake me in the morning, you better have a cup of coffee that. in your hand. Put it like that. You've no idea, sweetheart. I mean, I'm a, I'm a grumpy get in the morning. I don't do mornings, right? But Bunny takes the biscuit. I hand her a coffee and back out the room. That's for yep. personal safety. <laughs> but aye. It's all well, it is weird, though, isn't it? When you're at home, it's so like, do you want breakfast? Oh, God, no. Yeah. But when you're at Premier Inn, oh, yeah. Go yeah. on, yeah. give yeah, me. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, mate, <laughs> uh, if you're going... Yeah, if you're going for breakfast at the Premier Inn, no. If you're going for the buffet breakfast at the Prem, make sure you get there before Andy Summerfield or there'll be football left for anybody. I think <laughs> he has about four breakfasts every morning. To, I don't have to cook. 
Do you know what I mean? I'm on yeah. holiday. I don't have to cook it. I can just sit there and enjoy it and walk away. I don't have dishes to do anything either. Exactly. So that's a big part of it for me. Yeah, that's always a plus side. Yeah, I'm going to take my bubba cup with me this time, though. You know, my big bubba cup that Aries bought me? Yeah. My big 72 ounce one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that with me for an expo so that I can make a coffee in the hotel room before I go to the expo and I'll have a coffee that will last me pretty much a couple of hours. Yeah. I'm going to be looking um, like pretty much every expo for the last couple of years that I've been to. There's been these guys there with those uh, coffee machines that you just mm. go up and push a button to select what type of coffee or what sort of hot chocolate or whatever that you want. And, you know, you, you get free coffee all weekend. So I keep going back to them. <laughs> I, know. I know. Jules is a morning person. She's fucking chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap. I swear to God. She, her and Stevie came out here one day and I hadn't been very well. I was in bed. <laughs> and he shouted me, he says, oh, Stevie and Jules are here. And I got up and they were in the living room. And Jules, morning! And I just fucking growled at <laughs> yep. Walked by her at the kitchen, had my coffee, and then came out. And said, Hi. <laughs> I know. No, yeah. very good. So, uh, Vic, do you want to call in and talk to us about your Kelpie RDA? Yeah, you can call in yes. if you want, Vic. You're more than welcome. Wait, and I shall. Yeah, send them a link. Uh, hold on. Wait till I find them. Here he is. Thank um, you for the follow, Steve. Very much appreciated, sweetheart. Copy link. Because, as you know, I am still looking at the Vaporeso Jane mod, which I'm, I've still got my eye on. I love, as you know, I love Vaporeso stuff. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the, the Jane's gorgeous too. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's a I had asked... The vape club that I used to work in have got them in stock, and I saw them yesterday when I was in. Oh, my God, Gail, they are absolutely gorgeous. Well, I had asked Vic if he would, if he would let me use his even for a few days or a week, just to make sure that I liked it Hello. before I buy one. Hello. No camera. Hi, John. Hello. <laughs> I hope you're coming. Hang on a second. Right, bring her. Oh yep, God. bring her. Put Hi, Victor. Hi. Hello, Hi. my darling. I hope you're coming to Expo on the Sunday so I can get a cuddle. If I'm better. All right, well, I hope you're better, darling. It won't be the same without It will Expo. soon be a yeah, because I've not been well all week. I don't know if Mark's oh. told you. No. No, I've had the lurk. I've been in bed all week. Oh, well, if you oh, get the lurk, well. you don't bother coming along. With you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're feeling better soon, sweetheart. Oh, so do I, because it, it, it's been horrible. But anyway, that's another story. All right. <laughs> anyway. Well, I hope to see you soon. Feel better, darling. Yeah, see you all. Nice Bye, babe. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's you sleeping on the couch tonight, then. You do. Yep. <laughs> Hello, Cherub. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. So your prototype may be at Expo. Hold, yep. hold that. Hold that thought, Gail. Cindy has asked a very important question. Go you go for it then. Vic, Vic, Vic. How's your scrotum? My scrotum is not in question. There we go. <laughs> Hope that answers that one for you, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it the prototype? Is it the first prototype, or what? It's from 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 what I've heard. It's gonna be it's gonna be the pre-retail. Right. So it looks as if it looks as if they're get it looks as if they're getting it ready to launch. Um, there's going to be no markings on it because it is the prototype. But for all intents and purposes, it's almost the finished product. Cool. So which means they're not launching it at Expo, which means I can be left in peace. I'm not going to be having fifty-five people walking up to me over the way through the weekend going, Vic, can Lila. you fucking, can you fucking, can you like this, Vic? Can you put a <laughs> <in> Vic? <laughs> Oh, there. No, that'll be good. Really looking forward to it. We're, we're staying on the Sunday night as well. Oh, now, see, wouldn't that look amazing on the red Vaporeso oh. Jane mod? Oh, it would. Like, are you I getting like a red one or a blue? Or are you getting one of uh, these? Stainless steel, that's all they've made. 
Mate. I like that. Isn't it pretty? Oh, it is. I like that blue. Yeah, the blue's lovely. Yeah, I like the blue as well. That's because if I was getting the Vap Wrestle Gen, it would be the blue one I'd be getting, and that would be absolutely sexy as fuck mm. on it. Ooh. Vic, I've yeah, been waiting so long. Yeah, you're not alone, Mo. Yeah. Yeah, we've been itching for this one. I know, right, Irish? No purple. Blue will have to do then, won't it? I don't know. I don't know what colours they're making for the dripper. I know it's it's not going to be like a tank. They're actually going to do colours for this one this time. I think it's because the tank sold so well. That's why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, are you looking forward to Expo? Yeah. <laughs> see it. See it with a bit more feeling. Yeah. yeah at least, <laughs> at least try to sound like you mean it. <laughs> If I have to. <laughs> no, it's such a chore. Oh, right, then. <laughs> I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to it for the social side of things. Make sure you get the yeah. correct train this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid putting two virgin trains next to each other because they look the same. Yeah, but you got I two just breakfasts. What? You got two breakfasts. True. Nice. It was like I, I got off the first train because it was the wrong one that wasn't stopping at Birmingham International and I had my breakfast and that. Went off, got off at Carlisle, got on the second train, which was the right one, and the little the, the little stewardess or train thing, Did have you had your breakfast yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Um, a lot of people, while you're here, a lot of people have been asking where they can get spare Kelpie bubble glasses and straight glasses from. I think Fast Tech were selling them. There you go. Because I know Andy Summerfield's looking for a straight one, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting. I want you two to stand next to each other just to see if he's a grown any and the change in height is, is, is different than it was the last time we measured. Who? Who, Mark? Mark. Oh. Remember a couple of years ago, Vic, we got Remember that photo of you and Mark stood back to back and that was when we proved to Gwen that you were taller. <laughs> <laughs> Many moons ago. <laughs> Many moons ago, yeah. Sorry, Mark, I'll bring you insoles this time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get some 70s uh, big heels. <laughs> Mark, you can borrow my new rocks if you want. They'll add a good couple of inches onto your height. I need it. <laughs> fast Tech have them. I just peeked on the store. Thank you, Timmy. There we go. So, yeah, Fast Tech have them. I'm needing to redo mine. I've been using it all week, but I need to redo it. It's been cleaned. So, yeah, so what are you looking forward to the most other than just socialising? Is my brownies. going to be some Guinness partaking? My brownies. The top side, the top side squonker from Signature Tips. Yeah. Ooh. That's right. the reason, that's the reason that Signature Tips and Dovepo are sharing the same booth and they're having Brian TVC at the same booth because Dovepo and Dovepo TVC and Signature Tips have teamed up for the Look top at this. Side. Look right. at this, all the way from Lanzarote. The wonderful VHR Games has joined us this evening. Oh, he's in Lanzarote, the jammy saw. Yeah, the jammy fuckers in Lanzarote. Hi, I used to like you, piss off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there in the sun. No, I hope you're well, Steve Dave. Um, I just got my Kelpie RTA, no more Phillips screws, in perfect match on my iJoy. Altex. Joytech Altex T80. Thank you. I was trying to read that without the giggies on. <laughs> yeah, I hope you like it, Tina. It is, it's a great it's a great wee tank. And I don't, as you know, I don't do tanks. Yep. Rocking my kelpie right, right now. So. Mm -hmm. Rocking my kelpie right now. So what's the forecast? What's the weather forecast for next week? Has anybody checked? Are we going rain. to be Baltic again? Rain. Rain. Oh. It's rain. It's not going to be Baltic though, but it's it's going to be raining. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, wet, see, but it's to be a bit warmer. See if that wee woman for East Coast is on the reception. She's going to get a piece of my mind this time. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, is that the wee bitch that told everybody to stop vaping? Ah, the time. time she came out and told us all to move constantly. Mm -hmm. Do you know that way? And, oh, you can't vape here and keep the noise down. And that's, 
do you know what? I'm going to get her a piece of my mind because at the end of the day, we put, we put a fortune in that hotel every expo weekend. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And if they're not prepared to let us sit in the restaurant area or the bar area at night and at least have a V, do you know what I mean? After the, obviously the restaurant bit's closed or whatever, then they need to be doing something or have some sort of covered area outside for us. Oh, they've got a bus shelter. I hate to fuck like I'm going to sit in a bus shelter. <laughs> That's harkening back to your days as a teenager sitting in the bus shelter with a bottle of cider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but last October we were absolutely freezing. It was, it was fucking cold. Oh, the last October. October. Yeah. But May was cold, wasn't it? Because like, May we were really, we couldn't even yeah, May was up cold. in the grass area. So it'll be interesting anyway. I'm sure, I'm sure the alcohol shall keep us warm. Oh, yes. Are you going to be able to stay and have a wee drink with us one night, Mark? I know you're travelling. Might be able to, can't see that being a problem. Yeah, or, you know, staying at the hotel. No, Mark. I'm not stopping. No. I'm, I'm going to be there all weekend, but we're travelling backwards and forwards. Ooh. Oh, it's only an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30 for us. Oh, well, yeah. It's not too yeah, bad. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> so, not easy for us. Village. <laughs> 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 Back addicted, Mrs. Doubtfire was fucking on one last time. Uh, <laughs> it as well, coming to think of it, as well, Mark, because you're saving about 300 quid in hotel fees. Yeah. Well, I was telling We to actually you saved know. a hell of a lot of money on our booking tonight, Vic. We had it pre booked and it was going to cost us 320 quid. We rebooked it today, it's only costing us 209. Well, you know why that is? It's because the sex boat cancelled and they've got a shitload of empty rooms now. Mm hmm. Yeah, we've done the same, and we, we, we're now staying the Sunday night as well. I'm going to travel home the Monday. See, I, I rebooked mines before the announcement of this expo, and I went pay now, but on, on the flexi pay, because I went, I went I'm, I'll went, i be there on Thursday, and I'm leaving on Monday, and I went for the fucking huge <laughs> meal deal and the fucking why. I just fucking buy everything, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> like 455 quid it was. Yeah, Ouch. but when I rebooked it, and that's with the sex bow still on, when I rebooked it, it dropped it down to about 320 quid. And I'm like, fucking suits me fine. You should have a look at it again tonight because can't, I've already paid it. Again. He's um, already paid it. Yeah, still a good saving though. That is a good yeah, saving. Yeah, well, we've, we've saved ourselves 111 pounds. So, you know, we ran down on uh, Thursday morning. So. Just shows how much of a conning bunch of bastards Premier mm. Inn actually is. Business expenses buy everything, says Irish. <laughs> Timmy's saying not staying at the hotel as taxis all three days is cheaper, but we still like to come party to my to on my half a lag or shandy. You're more than welcome, Timmy, to come and join us, buddy. Uh, um, yeah, Tina, we um actually discussed that a couple of weeks ago on the show about that Senator Riley calling for a flavour ban in Ireland. But um, yeah, I think it's an absolute joke. But we'll we're going to be doing a special show, Tina, on this um, on the sixth of November on our YouTube channel, yeah. and we'll be covering that as well as what's happening in Scotland and in England and how the, the American thing is maybe seeping over here in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing a special show. Vic will be on with us, and uh, Andy Morrison from the NNA will be on with us. Chris will be yeah. on with us as well. Chris will be on with us. So we're going to be covering a lot of that on the special show on YouTube on the 6th of November, if it's something you're interested in. Yeah. And also, yes, are you getting a scooter this time? It's already booked. You know how I love you. <laughs> <laughs> she wants a backy, Vic. She wants a backy. I want a backy. You can borrow it when you need it, Gail. I uh, see. so good to me. I'm making scones and Empire Biscuits, so... Okay. Oh, Empire Biscuits. <laughs> They're mine, Victor. Pose off them. I'm, I'm going to make... I'm going to fight, make a you'll have to fight me and Emily for them. <laughs> I'm going to make a batch this weekend and freeze them, and then I'll do another couple of batches next week so that there's plenty to go down. Yeah, well, I'll get some brownies done, but um, I, te I like to have them sort of fresh, so I'll do them the night before. That's how I do the scones. Yeah, I'll do them the night before. So, yeah, I'll get a uh, couple of batches of brownies done for everybody. Oh, that's nice. And I knew I had a picture of that. That's uh, that's Robin, Robin, who, who are you? Uh, some guy over in China that's holding up. <laughs> <laughs> a 
that was very, very informative. There's some guy over in China, I hope. <laughs> and that's it, sitting, that's it, sitting on top of the mod that Ambitions Vapor didn't make and had his name removed from in the recent batch. <laughs> um, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. But you can say anything, you're on the bitches, you're allowed. Yeah, that that mod <laughs> Ambitions Vapor's name Ambition Vapor's name has disappeared from it. Just it looks just like an SL class from the top. It is, it is basically an SL class, but with it's a an SL rip off. That's what I said the minute I saw it the first time. It was an SL rip off. Should I show a picture? No, should I? Should I? I don't get drunk at Expo Irish. I don't drink very much when I'm there. No, I drink Gail's share. It's all right. Yeah, she drinks my share. Do that, and then that, and that's all you're Whoa. seeing of it. No, no, do that again. No, because it'll get thing. fucking cloned. <laughs> see, I've not got my specs on. Oh, f- see if this gets cloned before it gets released, Gail. It's your fault. Just a, just a wee flash will do. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> right, you ready? There you go. Ready? Right, okay, got it. Ooh. Nice. Nice. Mm. Yep. Like that. Are you making homemade baileys to bring to Expo Brew? <laughs> well, why are you teasing me then? Teasing. Oh, right. <laughs> no, Irish, I will not be in the car park. <laughs> Gary, screenshot sent to Fast Tech. <laughs> 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 So is there one company in particular that you're looking forward to speaking with at Expo, Mark? What were you? What stands are jumping out for you? I know that you've been to Expo so many times. Is there anything that jumps out for you? To be honest with you, not not this Expo, no. I'm quite surprised. I thought there would be... I said this at the beginning of the year. Um, me, personally, I think there's nothing exactly exciting come out this year. I agree with you. It's all very much seamy, seamy, isn't it? It, it really has. Um, there's no, don't get me wrong. There's been some fantastic uh, devices come yeah. out and a bit of hardware that's come See out. Later, Jackie. Really has, but nothing has made me go, oh, I want that. Yeah. It's been plodding along this year. It really has. It's, it's, for me, right, now we know Bunny loves our poets, right? For me, it's just pod after pod after pod after pod. And everything you see coming out, the only one that, the, the new MVP has intrigued me. Mm. It's not one that I would necessarily buy, but I'm quite looking forward to having a look at it. The, the, the MVP5? Yeah. I saw them yesterday. Uh, Ballamina Vape Club has them in. And right. yeah, they are actually very, very nice. Uh, the one, on the one in the pictures that looks like it's gold, is a god awful colour. It really is the nicest was, out of the whole lot of them. It's the white. That's the one that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago on here, and the the one that's supposed to be gold just looks like shit, fucking diarrhea to me. Yeah, it does. It's a horrible sandy colour. It really is just god awful. Um, but the uh, the one I like is the white. Are you coming to Expo, Jackie? All right, Tina, thank you for joining us, darling. Well, I hope Jack is coming to We need more wee hugs, darling. Oh, we do. Um, yeah, that's the only thing. That and the Vaporeso gen, obviously, that I need to get my paws on. Mm. But other but, than that... that late with that, though, Gail, the gen two is coming out at the end of this year. Yes, I know, but... Yeah, but you know, rightly, you know that. rightly, they've actually ended up with that one as well. Because she's got that wee family of taro kits. Now she's going to be getting oh, the wee family right. of gem yeah. kits. You know yeah. what I like with the Vaporesso? I like Vaporesso stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm not quite partial to the Vaporesso stuff myself. Yeah, I like the Vaporesso. 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 AMD processors, that's what we're talking about. Oh, fucking computer. Hey, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I hope to see you in May then. Evening, Pud. Welcome, darling. Uh, How are you I doing, hope, Pud? I hope the wee one's okay. 
Yeah, so I can't believe it. It's the first place a week away and we'll be there. I know. I know. A week today, we'll have done a day. I know. It's going to be great. Oh, bless her. She's home and pumped up on steroids, Gail. Aw. Give her a wee hug from us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Will be interesting to see what they've done with the media area for the reviewers because it's like three times the size of the one in May. Hmm. It's going to be very interesting to see what they've done. I mean, Jay was te- Jay was Jay was teasing us. Oh, there might be a mini bar. I don't think there's going to be a mini bar there, but it's a big area, so it's going to be interesting to see what they've put there. Mm. I think it's a cracking idea. Yeah, I really yeah. do. It's like right, okay. Am I going to address an elephant that's in the room here, right? Because you know it's me, and I just say what I think. So, right, there's been all this who have over. Dovepo, the, the, the promotion that Dovepo have done with Brian and Mike, and who's the other one? I don't even know who he is. Uh, uh, must have just right one. That's yeah, Joel. Right. So they're doing all this promotion now. It's Dovepo themselves, it's not Expo. It's Dovepo stand that's been doing all this. Right, so a few people have been saying that they don't think it's right because the, the UK-based reviewers don't get that same level of promotion. What are your thoughts on it? Mark, you go first. It's an interesting one, that one, because, yeah, I agree. The American reviewers do seem to be more, oh, look, it's them, compared to us. Okay. The one thing, the one point I have to add to that is the fact that uh, the three people, especially that Dove Poe are promoting and advertising, have, in fact, made products with them. So mm. it's an advertising gimmick for Dove Poe. Oh, of course it is, yeah. And that's why they're getting the big ups that they are at the Mm -hmm. minute. It's nothing to do with the fact that they've got so many hundreds of thousands of subscribers between them. It's purely because they have um, designed and released products under the Dump Pole banner that so many vapors that are going to be walking around there that weekend have in their collection. And it's a chance for those people to make the brains behind it. That's Right, Vic, go for it. The trouble is with the the thing that went on with Dovepo. Um, Vapor Expo UK did blast it out on their social media, but they didn't really blast it out that much on their Facebook because everyone knows that most people are following Vapor Expo UK and Facebook these days because yeah. Twitter's an absolute shit show and everyone ignores Instagram because it's full of tits and ass these days. So it's all it's all down to fucking Facebook. And here's the thing, you know, if EH Pro was to fly, which they're never going to fucking do, but if EH Pro was to fly me over to one of the US Expos, not that there is going to be any US Expos next fucking year by the looks of it, but if there was a US Expo next year and EH Pro flew me over and they had me up in banners, would ECC mention me? No. They wouldn't. No. I know for a fact they wouldn't because when it comes to the specific country expo, it's the UK Vapor Expo. It's ECC United States. Over in the United States, they concentrate on the reviewers that are from the United States, with the massive exception of Vaping Bogan, because every fucking everyone knows who Vaping Bogan is. Mm-hmm. So I, I can kind of see, I can kind of see, I can kind of see where a lot of people were going. And the big worry for me is in 2020. With all the flavor bands that have went down over in the United States, the East Coast and the West Coast has been wiped out. All the vape shops, well, not all, most of the vape shops have shut down. That's even with judges stepping in to try and stop things from happening, right? If there is no major expos next year in the United States, it basically means that all of the major companies are going to be using the UK Vapor Expo which, to be honest, is still the biggest expo out there as the centerpiece for the United States design products, which will basically go to all us poor saps in the UK. Yeah. I mean, look at it. Mr. Just Right One has got just under 20,000 subscribers. He has released two products. I have three times his subscriber base, four times his number base and viewership, eight times his social media release, and I've also released two products. Okay, right, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, right? (laughs) Right. Okay, right, so 
I personally... Why did Mike sound ever so nervous there? <laughs> right, no, but I personally, I agree with you to a point, right? I do. I think Vapor Expo is an evolving, growing event. Now, it's been going three years, but I think we can all see that... Jay and the boys visited Stuttgart, the what was it? Hall of Fame? Is that Hall it? of Vape. Hall of Vape. Right, so they visited that, so they were looking at ideas of how to evolve the Vapor Expo to grow it. So it is an evolving, growing event. Um, we've seen that with is it now having a media area and there's going to be a modest gallery and all that sort of thing, right? So I personally think that the boys from Vapor Expo have always supported the UK reviewers and casters because they've always been very supportive and given us the press passes and yeah. things like that. Granted, I agree, they don't promote individual reviewers in a way which Dubco seem to have done and that Vapor Expo have jumped on in this circumstance. I don't think, I think they could, you know, use the fact that the reviewers and the casters and all that are there, especially the reviewers with the subscribership of the size of like Vic and that, to bring more people into the expo. I think they could have done that. But can I, can, that, I, can, I, can I say just something just before you go any further? You've also got to flip that one on the head as well. Yes, we are getting press passes, but aren't we promoting Vapor Expo? Yes, absolutely. No, I agree with you. Absolutely. How much, how much free uh, advertisement is Vapor Expo getting? No, absolutely. I agree with you, Mark. Buy off the bags of us. Exactly. Yeah. Because, I mean... We're it's, it's a, a, it's a, a, don't, don't get me wrong, it's an equal, um, it's fair thing. I absolutely. Don't... No, I agree with you. You know, I mean, we're doing an expo show tonight. But in saying that, I think that the more that the UK the community, and I'm not just talking about reviewers, I'm not just talking about the casters, I'm talking about vapors in general, may moan about that, the more it may come across as to our grapes. Because at the end of the day, Vapor Expo is a business, and they're running an event that is a business, and if if the companies that are paying these, all these thousands of pounds for these stands are doing that to bring people into Vapor Expo, that can only be a good thing for the UK vapors as general. The more that people harp on the negative stuff, the more chance there is that we wouldn't have a vapor expo to fucking go to in the first place. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's just my, gen my, my wee take on it. I think, you know, we it's a fine line that has to be, yes, bring the point up, but it's a fine line that we have to watch. Mm. You all look dumbstruck now. <laughs> the thing is, though, if, you, if, you, if you want to play extreme devil's advocate, we can go down the road that Mark Solom went down. If it wasn't for the reviewers pushing the Vapor Expo when it first started in 2015, it would know it would have got nowhere near the size it is today. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, absolutely. I agree nowhere with that. Near. I agree with that. It's like we've, we've spoke about there's going to be the Scottish Expo in February, you know, yep. Um, yep. and obviously being up here, a lot of it's going to fall on you, Vic, because, I mean, other than that fucking prick, do you know what I mean? You're the biggest, you're the biggest Scottish-based reviewer. We so, need to say, though, it's not strictly a vape expo, it's a vape and CBD expo. It is, but that's a good thing, is it that not? That's a good thing. Do so I think, you know, when, when we see positives like this happening, we, we should jump on it and we should promote the positive of it as much as possible. Mm. The negative points like that should be done... In the background, they should be done Gil, one on one discussing it. Gil oh. Gary says, Oi, leave my toddy alone. Oh, my God, he's a <laughs> And I, I, I've met the guy on a, a number of occasions. I'm saying that from personal experience. Okay, so uh, I, I bumped anyway. into him, I bumped into him and the big orange balloon from the US over at um, Hall of Eight. We kind of growled each, each, each other and walked past. Yeah, I know, because of look, what I have on my BH. Do you know? oh. that's, that's what you brought me back from Stuttgart. Oh. I've, got it, I've got it on my vape shelf. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I'm not fucking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Did you hear that? <laughs> um. Be right back, I'm sticking you in. You, you stick me in, Gary, I'm telling you. <laughs> I fronted him out to his face and he didn't have the balls. He just about turned and walked away from me. Um, 
you know me, I, I don't deliberately go after or want to be negative with people, but if somebody is negative or does things that I think are harmful to my friends and whatever, then I will call them out on their bullshit. That's just the trouble that there's about it. Yep. Um, yeah, so, no, but don't, do you understand where I'm coming from where I think that, you know, we need to promote the positive thing, that there's too yeah. much negativity out mm. there? You know, it, it's negative enough with everything that's happening in the States and in, you know, India and all of this. We're very, very lucky in the UK. I think we should be promoting the positive out there as much as possible. Oh, definitely, yeah. Three dog, my girl. Thank you Hello, for the beautiful. description. Hello, beautiful. Beck, what do you think? What? Ah, hold on. Andy Summerfield is just saying there, uh, Bonnie, it, it also <laughs> looks like that the US reviewers have releases coming out at Expo as a world first, and that's why Dogpo have brought them over. Thank you, Sainty. Thank you, Sainty. I mean, me personally, I think there's room for all of us. Um, I do. Is asking, do we know if Jay Hayes is coming over or not? He's not. He can't make it now. Right. I know. I know Nick's coming over. Grim Gray and he's coming over. Yeah, Nick was saying it's not. He's not going to make it this time. The, the, no, my, no. I think my, he said he was coming over again in May, though. My fear. And everyone knows I'm pretty damn good when it comes to gut feelings and most of my predictions normally come true. Hey, mm -hmm. look at the shit show that happened in America. Called it. <laughs> right. Let me just it. address this, right? What? See this, I fucking told you so. You need to wrap it in. No, right? not, I'm no you fun. need to wrap it in because no, you said it. You said it, and I know you're having fun with it, right? But <laughs> I get it, right? Because it's a great feeling when you call something like, yeah, I told you so. <laughs> but all it does is alienate people and fucking piss them off. Anyway, well, Jackie's asking you for your opinion on this. Uh, I do think, though, that they need to court our guys and gals more, to be honest. But here's a question. Vic, for instance, would you seriously want to be tied into representing and promoting a specific company? Wouldn't that undermine the fairness and bias or non-bias of your reviews? No, it wouldn't. Because that if I was if I was to go, it kind of happened in May where I was at the where I was at the EH Pro and Artery stand. I'm promoting my product. I'm not promoting a review. That's a bit horrible. Don't be like that. Fucking tan your ass. <laughs> anyway, I think that's what you secretly want, Gail. Well, maybe we want it. Fucking don't talk to my pal like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, it's like I think because of what is happening in the states, that it, I mean, we know that vaping's done in the states. They're fucked. I think we can all agree with that. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. And let's face it, and what they're going to do? Oh, they're going to come over here, aren't they? Yeah. They're going to, so, you watch, you watch, especially next year. Next year will be the big one. Yeah. You will see most of the American reviewers, especially the big ones, they'll be over here. If they're not over here, they'll be in Europe. And then there's also, don't forget, they've got the big expo in Dubai as well. The fuck you say yeah, to me, you little Dubai, shit? I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be Wait. massive. Hey, Tandy. Hello, buddy. I love you. That's um, our Tandy. Um, so, should we then, because the UK really should become a beacon for the world as far as vaping is concerned, I think it could, be, it could be a positive beacon. So, should we then make a point of pushing and promoting all the, the UK reviewers and casters now? So that when that happens, that the, the, we're talking about US reviewers. I mean, how many of them are actually going to keep a channel going? How many of them are still going to be able to get stuff to review on a channel? Mm. Well, funny that that's what I said. Whenever all these bands and everything started coming into place and all that, I I said at that time, uh, watch that space because because of the way it's turning into a shit show in the states. They're, the companies are not going to be able to send stuff to the reviewers over there for review, so they will be looking towards the UK and the U and the European reviewers um, to pump that out a lot more, because mm -hmm. they're not going to get the same level of promotion, especially when they lose a lot of the American reviewers, because they're not going to be allowed to, like th those reviewers themselves, even, even if they try to buy the products, they're not going to be able to get them because of the bans on the 
the import and export of you know vape and gear so i think a lot of the companies are going to be turning their attention towards the uk especially and uh the rest of mainland europe um to try and keep their numbers up because like, how many, when you think about it over the years how many people have bought a product from one of those companies on the back of someone's review mm. so especially the americans because they've got a wider audience they've got a far better reach than what we have but that's all going to shift because all those reviews now are going to be done by European and UK reviewers, it is going to make a big difference. So I think, I think you'll see a, big lot more, in Russia. a lot more of those companies will start reaching out to a lot of the UK boys now that That's they exactly didn't previously right. reach out to. I was going to say, I, I think Russia is going to take off a big yeah. time as well. Yeah. Because you start looking over that end of the world and you'd be surprised how many what should I say? High numbered subscribed reviewers are out there. Well, I was very surprised when Vic and Chris yeah. had told me when you came back from the Hall of uh, Vape, the, 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 the reviewers not in Germany and the subscriber counts mm. that they have. I, I didn't know that, you know, that there was such big reviewers and such a big vape scene in, in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. But I was about to say that as well, Mark. Russia is a, Russia's a big, big mm. um, country for vaping. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uh, mech mod makers in Russia. Mm. Hell of a lot. I think, you know, I mean, we've got a chance here to actually do something good. It would be a shame if, you know, we didn't jump on it. Mm. But right now, it's a fact. Right now, it's got, if you're in Scotland, right, you need to contact your MSP, you need to write to them and ask them about this nonsense that the SNP government are bringing in. Yeah. About. Uh, and a, a ban on that. advertising vaping. They've got a consultation open just now. And the more of us that contact our MSPs about it, the better it is going to be for us. Because as you all know, what happens in Scotland tends to trickle its way into the rest of the mm. UK. So if we can fight as much as we can fight just now to stop that, it can only be a good thing. There, yeah, that's your tell now. <laughs> Let's face it, like I said when, before we went on live, Scotland's always guinea pig. Mm -hmm. Always has Always been. is. Oh, yeah. Always has been. Remember, we had the poll tax a year before everybody else. Mm -hmm. There was riots up here because of it. Yeah. That's right. I remember that in the news whenever it all kicked off. Yeah, Manic Stereo was asking, Gail, did you see the reply that he got from the Health and Sport and Wellbeing Minister? Yes, I did, Paul. I had a wee look at it. I'm, uh, I've been talking to Kenny and I've been talking to Andy. As you know, we're doing this show um, on the 6th. So, yeah. Um, and I'm talking to my own MSP as well, who was the Minister for Health and Wellbeing, um, Jamie. So I'm doing it. Sorry, two seconds. I think Lexi's... What are you doing? Are you having a fit? No, sorry. The, the Doug's been going through her fits the last two days. Um, so, yeah, I've been talking to them a lot about it, but I did. I saw that, Paul. It was quite interesting. But the more of us that actually jump on it and the more of us that contact them, do you know what I mean? If it's just if it's just a wee trickle and people are apathetic about it, then they're not going to take much notice. Yep. Have you been in touch with your MSP, Mick? My MSP? Yeah. She never answered back. Go and chop her door. I don't know where she lives. Not the fucking her house door going to go to her. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 excuse me. Oh, by the way, see you. See you. <laughs> you and that fucking advertising man can get a fuck, right? What are your searches, like the consultation searches is that they do? Yeah, never thought yeah. of that. Get a tell. You don't do this. <laughs> Oh, I love you. You can't help. <laughs> I'm on it. 15-minute email. We'll be getting tight after the show. I'll be like Bobby Crush on drugs. <laughs> I know. Vic arrested in MSP's garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can just see the headlines now. I know. But the thing is, it's the same as, you know, it's the same as everything that's been on in the States. If, if we don't jump on it now and do something about it now, then it's going to be all done and dusted. And then people are going to be like, oh, wait a minute, you're taking away our right to vote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, now's your chance to do something about it. 
Well, are they actually the trying to ban completely? Are they, are they just trying to complain a uh, total ban of uh, any advertisement? Yeah, they're trying to bring it into line with the tobacco products. So right. it'll be the same where things can't be put on public display. There'll be no like public billboards or advertising. Yeah, so at the present moment, yeah. so like billboards, buses, I think it can be done in the cinema, can't it, as well? Yeah. And that's about it. looking at banning all of that and bringing yeah. it into the, the same... The same bracket as tobacco advertising. And I take it um, nobody has been educated to the fact that uh, vaping and smoking are two completely different entities. The thing is, well, this is what surprises me, because I don't know whether you agree with it, right? But in Scotland, we have been very pro-vaping. The NHS yeah. are very pro-vaping. The, the Scottish government are very pro-vaping. <clears throat> I mean, they've brought, they've brought in the um, prisoners, all the prisoners in Scotland, they get given um, certificates. Well, here's the, the question. In Scotland is a Scottish... total smoking man now and they, they have starter kits supplied to them. Pregnant well, women if, get starter Scottish... kits supplied to them. If the Scottish government are so pro vaping, why are they calling for a ban on uh, advertising the products? If they're if they're so for vaping, why are they trying to, you know, crush got, it and hide it away? Because they got twenty complaints, didn't they? We got twenty complaints, and it's about June. Yeah. It, out, of the, out of the how many thousands of vapors there are in Scotland, they got twenty complaints, and they're they're doing this off the back of yeah, but let's face it, irrelevant we're... people. We live in a society that's smoke. offended. Come on, we, we live in a society that's offended. And then people that are offended, they they their voices are more heard than anybody else's. Oh, well, they can get themselves to fuck, as Gail would say, because mm. this is... The, I'm so fucking sick of this whole snowflake society. People need to put their big boy and big girl pants on, suck that shit up, and stop crying about every damn thing that they can just because it's Tuesday. It's like... Fucking get a grip. There's a lot bigger problems going on in the world, and you're pissed about the fact that somebody dared to walk down the street with an e-cigarette. Yeah. Fuck off. Absolutely. I mean, we you know, you're preaching to the converted, we all know this. But as Mark said, 20 complaints, and plus all the, the mainstream media that's been coming out of the states with this vaping and it causes lung disease and there's people dying, and you know what I mean? we all know it's all bullshit. Mm. But the government have to be seen to be taking people's health responsibly so they've got to fucking they've got to do something or be, at least be seen to be doing something about it mm. um i agree with you do you know what i mean but i think it's idealistic for us to just say well get yourself to fuck and not personally take some sort of duty or responsibility as a vapor on to at least write a letter or an email at least if you've done that you've done a bit to help maybe i'm idealistic thinking that way but no you're not no no I think the other problem is as well as the Scottish government, because Scotland as a country decided to vote to remain within the EU, the Scottish National Party, out of all the parties up here in Scotland, are the most pro-European party that in the whole of the UK, let's be honest, that's including Labour down south. They're the most pro-European party in the UK. And I think what the SNP want to be seen as doing is shifting Scotland more in line with Europe to kind of send a message down south to Westminster because it's not as if the SNP do not know about the Royal College of Physicians statement. It's not as if the SNP do not know about the two hospitals in Birmingham that have opened up fucking vape shops inside the fucking hospital. They know, but they're doing it anyway. <clears throat> they're doing it anyway. You've got, to remember, you've got to remember as well, there's more at stake here than just vaping because with everything that's happening within the United Kingdom, with Brexit, with all of that nonsense, up in Scotland, there's there's, there's a, another big drive for independence going on up here because of yeah. all of that. Yeah. So with the SNP being in government in Scotland for 10 years, do you know what I mean? They've got, they've got to look at their voter base. They've got to look at, um, you know, where people stand on the whole spectrum of um, issues, do you know what I mean? It's not just a one issue thing because they, they're looking to get Scotland independent and, and as the long term goal. So the vaping issue, as we all know, there's people out there who are misinformed or who are not educated and who are ignorant that vaping is so much safer than smoking. They've got to look at the whole vapor, vapor base. So there's more involved here than just, mm. you know, the vape issue. But could this also be sort of like because someone's actually complained about it, 
that they've got to go through the, you know, the rigmarole of investigating it. And like everything else, media has blown it up more than what it really is. Mm -hmm. I've got a compromise. How about this? 20 complaints went in about Juul. How about you put a ban on advertising Juul products and leave the fucking rest of us alone? So it's me, fine. Hmm? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, can it's you look at it, it's Juul about... that have fucked us all. Yeah, yeah, if it's Juul they're complaining about, ban Juul. You know, Juul are the problem here. It's not the rest of us ordinary responsible vapors that are just trying to stay away from cigarettes. Blame Juul. They're the ones that are slowly destroying the market from the inside out. They're trying to destroy the whole fucking industry with their bullshit. And it's about time that they all took a very long walk off a very fucking short pier. Yeah, absolutely. Preferably wearing concrete boots as well. Yeah. Clark saying in the UK, 132 people have been killed and stabbed by knife time in 2019, and then they worry and focus about nobody dying from vaping in the UK ever. Absolutely. Exactly. Clark, yeah. it, it, at the end of the day, it all comes down to that. We all know it comes back to the money. You follow the money. Um, Sorry, but you can't put a price on someone's life, and I find somebody's life a hell of a lot more important than the amount of fucking dollars you have in your bank account. And also, you've got to remember as well, it's media. Mm-hmm. And we have got... The, the society now has got such a short um, attention span now. Oh, yeah. All we want is a little headline, and that's it. That's all the information we yeah. want. And media is lapping it up because that's all we get is a little snippet and that's it. You know, every all everything about it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. Tandy saying, Colorado, stop smoking commercial that airs on TV. How about to use vaping to stop smoking? They'll even supply the starter kits. Absolutely. I mean, that's what we have up here. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some There's some um, NHS, what's the word I'm looking for? Rick? It's not the... Bust. Trust, that's one. Um, there's some of the NHS trusts in Scotland who are making individual policies, and some of them are bringing vaping rooms back into hospitals instead of, remember years ago it was the smoking rooms that you had? Mm, yeah. So some of them, Grampian, are looking at having vaping rooms um, on wards in the hospitals again, whereas in other trusts you've got them that you can't even vape outside the hospital, so it's a... It's yeah, it's giving mixed messages, isn't it? Yeah. So there needs to be a kind of a, I think, a, a broader look at the whole thing and how to, to move forward in a more positive way with it. Uh, True Blue is saying, people, including my mum, die from lung cancer, but let's strangle the most effective way of quitting. Fuck all the way off. And then when you get there, fuck all the way off again. Mm-hmm. Fuck Jill too, you sound like Rick. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. But we, as I say, we, we are the converted guys. We know how mm. much this I mean for example this I haven't been very well this last week at all um I've spent a lot of my week in bed just not feeling very good and Matt you'll know that I'm asthmatic and got COPD now I have not had to use an inhaler since I started vaping my lung function is 50% better than what it was when I was smoking um, and my asthma attacks tend to be infection related. So if I take a cold, a sore throat, a sniffle, within half an hour, I could have been in a blue light ambulance to the hospital. That has not happened since I started vaping. But this week, my chest has felt very tight. And I would normally have been at the doctor and been in hospital on oxygen, getting nebulised and all the rest of it. I haven't even had to use an inhaler. I've just basically been doing what everybody else does. Do you know what I mean? Paracetamol and lots of fluids. And it's, it's went away. Now, it has saved my life. So when you see all this negative publicity and people are dying from this and people are dying from that, absolutely, it rips my knit and, and it boils my piss, to be honest, do you know what I mean? Because I think, how many people out there are buying this? How many people are believing this? How many of us have been out there vaping and somebody said, oh, you need to stop that while they're fucking smoking a fag? Yeah. I've had three people private message me um, when this all kicked off in America. Private message me asking that if they should stop vaping. I've really? Well. Yeah, I've had it as well. Have you? Yeah. Yeah, I've had it as well. And I tell you one thing: in all the time that I've been vaping, I've never felt such a sinking feeling when I got asked that. Mm-hmm. Well, Chris had said that there was a regular customer that he had in the shop who's now back smoking. They walk by the shop now, they saw him walking by with a fan. Uh, but that. there's an update on that. He came back in again about a week later and bought himself a new kit. He's back on the vapes again. That's good. 
Mm -hmm. you know it's just, just it's... i just want to address uh, some comments in chat here uh sorry i interrupt you but Tetley Man is saying uh, there's a British journalist on Twitter offering £100 for every negative vaping story. Uh, Tandy is saying that the states are so far apart from everything uh, here, you can change laws by changing laws. Our country is a wee bit fucked. And Vape and Irish said no one has ever died from vaping. People have died from what they chose to vape. They chose to vape black market drugs and they died from it. It's a tragedy, but fuck all to do with us. It's like that banning syringes cool. because people die of heroin overdoses and leaving diabetics without insulin. Mm -hmm. And I think he raised a very valid point there. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I, I agree with that. Um, I mean, at the SNP conference last week, um, now we know that this is just the SNP party at their conference, but they are in the majority party in the, the Scottish Parliament. Um, they all voted to decriminalise drug use. And they have been trying for a long, long time. Long time. Long time. Scotland has the worst drug use of Europe. Oh, yeah. More people die in Scotland of drug use than anywhere else in Europe. More people die in Scotland of drug use than England, Wales, France, Germany, Spain and Ireland together die of drug use in Scotland. So they've been looking at doing this. They've been looking at getting clean rooms and safe rooms set up. But Westminster won't allow it because it's not a devolved power. They're not allowing the Scottish government to do it because it's not a devolved power. Um, but it's still something that they're fighting and they're trying to get done. They're looking at bringing in, the SNP want to bring in med medicinal use of uh, CBD. Um, and cannabis oil into Scotland, they're not allowed to do it. So there's a lot of things, do you know what I mean, that are happening, that are changing, that we are, this is why there's such a big, big drive for independence up here as well. Yeah. It goes back to, it goes back to what you were saying there about needles and everything. That's... Mm. See, this, this, is why, this is why I'm glad the Expo's coming up next weekend, because for a weekend we can sit back and go, see all the shit that's happening Fuck it all. Yes. And have a bit Cheers. of fun. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I think we need that as well, don't we? We do. A constant fight. Well, let's, let's face it. This last few weeks, you don't turn social media on. I know. Because it's so like, when it first started kicking off, it's so like you'd, you'd got this anger. And you, you did have this anchor because you, you, you're swearing at the blooming screen what you're reading. You did these stupid idiots. And it's got to the point now that you, you, it's just that feeling of dread. It's so like another idiot. And, it's so like, and the excuses and the, 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 the absolute bullshit that they're coming out with. Unfortunately, and it's so Mark, like you can see it. Unfortunately, Mark, there is no fix for stupid. There isn't. There isn't. How many of us as vapors, when something comes up, educate people? How many of us All time. actually show, right, here's the proof, here's the Royal College of Physicians study, here's this study, here's that study, you know, the, the latest one that's come out showing that secondhand vape, is, it, there's nothing in it. Harmless. It's not toxic at all, it's harmless. I've got documents on my phone. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same one. You do that as well, because I've got them in my yeah. phone as well. Yeah, I've got them as well. <laughs> You know, how many of us do that? But I'm sure, I'm quite sure that because we are the smaller percentage because we are hobbyists, mm -hmm. there are a lot of vapors out there who know that vaping has worked for them to get them off the stinkies, but they don't know how to argue the point because they've not done mm. their research on the science part of it. Or do you know what I mean? The statistical part of it. So how many people just go, oh, and walk away? Night, night, Jules, babes. Sleep well. Night, Jules. Night, night, Jules. Thank you, darling. Can't wait. We're going to Stephen Jules for dinner tomorrow. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Good night, my darling. See you tomorrow. I'm off to hospital tomorrow. Oh. Are, you, are you any further forward with things that you can talk about? The surgeon thinks I. it's not diverticulitis, it's diverticulosis, which is diverticulitis is a, a fault in the intestine where the intestinal tract develops pouches. Diverto and the pouches get infected, right? Diverticulosis is when the pouches are beginning to form. They're not infected, and I've got 20 or 30 years 
until diverticulitis may kick in. But on top of that, they found the first signs of colitis. And oh, that's what's causing the That's pain. not good. Ouch. Yeah, my, my best mate's brother has been has been suffering with colitis since yeah. he was about 15. That's what's causing um, the pain. Like, he's a year older than me, so he's been suffering from it for over 30 years now. So, that's where they know, go in and they operate and they take part of your intestines away. Mm. Well, they, they managed to, that this is really, really early on, and the surgeon is saying that it, there is new new treatments out there. If they, if they manage to catch it just as it's kicking in, they can hold it back before it gets too bad, and then they've got to start operating and taking lumps of your fucking intestine out. They yeah. caught it really early. Like, Ulcerative colitis, that's what uh, that's what my mate Nigel suffers from. He's had that since he was 15. So, so the doctors... Well, you, know, you, you do know that if you're going through the NHS, uh, Vic, it'll be through Dynarod. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it'll be... Pud puffs. <laughs> pud puffs are resident nurses saying there, Vic, get yourself on the prunes. It's a high-fibre diet. It may help to relieve it. That's what the surgeon said. Prunes. Yep. Prunes are prune juice, preferably mm -hmm. prune fresh. Yeah. I make a nice cake with prunes, Vic. <laughs> it, it, no, but it's like a sticky toffee pudding cake, and it's well, made that with sounds prunes. good. Yeah, you got his attention there. You said anything with toffee. toffee in the name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think sticky toffee pudding will help the colitis, but <laughs> it's got prunes in it, so it's healthy. <laughs> But the doctor know, said the the, the 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 doctor said they cut it <laughs> sure. very very early. Very early. <laughs> Podpuff says I've already told Vic I'll be appearing in his next colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in the rectum. Oh. <laughs> oh. Fuck it, close enough. <laughs> oh. oh, is it spring mounted? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with my scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to laugh, and you got to laugh. You fucking have to laugh. <laughs> this definitely seems larger than an eight ten. <laughs> oh Jesus, pod. I know. Listen, like a beautiful three dogs in chat. Are you going? Are you going to see it for her? Are you going to go on see it for her? Make her happy. Right, hold on. <laughs> okay, you what? Are you watching three dog? This is a battery three dog. It's a fucking old one that needs to be replaced. It's not working anymore. This is a 26 650. There you go, Dad. Go three dog. There you go. <laughs> there you go. You've just you've just made three dog melt into your computer chair now. <laughs> That's how she's happy now. <laughs> Which is another thing I need to get when I'm there, actually. I need to replace not just my 18650s, I need to replace lit literally all of them. Good. I'm we coming with you because I'm on a battery one too. Dead. So I need to replace I'm all, right. all of them. I'm actually still using some batteries that are three years old. They last about 20 minutes in my mod. They're ready for, they've been ready for the bin for ages. Yeah, and they're gone. You know I, mean? I need to get rid of them. Yeah. Big time. Every year I have a big clear up. I mean, they still look immaculate and they're re-wrapped and everything, do you know what I mean? But they're just dead. They're just done. When I used to do a mimex mode, <laughs> Tandy, I am not cleaning that up. <laughs> you know that three dogs living with Tandy now. <laughs> when I used to do mimex, I used to go through batteries like crazy. So I yeah, mimex, mimex, yeah. plow through batteries, mm. plow through them. Oh, no. oh um, Steve, Dave wants to know, Vic, is your team <laughs> playing? Yeah. Like <laughs> I don't even want to see I'm having a happy night tonight well, It's not too bad Director, I swear to God <laughs> He's still all there. Here's yeah. my new keyboard You're running over yeah. Shut up, we'll be off when we're done Good night uh. <laughs> See you Aidan uh, 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 uh. uh, In fairness I've seen it a lot Ignore worse that than bag that. of sweets sitting there Look, this is amazing <laughs> Beside his microphone for his cup, so there's pl th that's tidy. See? Right, go left now. I want to see the to the left. There we go. Uh, that's what I <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. 
I didn't know you too well. <laughs> it's not bad. I've seen it worse. Oh, yeah, seen a lot I worse have. In fairness, class. I've seen it a hell of a lot worse. I won't. I won't show you mine. So you're all right. I won't show you mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, so. You know, three dog Mike though. <laughs> That's nothing says, wrong with shit. Tandy says, holy shit, I'm impressed. That, that keyboard is creamy. <laughs> nice and time. it matches. Look, look, look. See, it's all blue. New mouse as well. And and if we spin this round, I've got LEDs now. I've actually put LED. I know, I know. I've put LED strips in the computer, so it looks like this now. Ooh, look what, at you. What's all this? I'll never, I'll never do the RGB. I'll never go down the fucking light route. No, it's a waste. Uh, I gave in, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I gave in. Well, quite right. Like. Gail, you know what we're going to have to get them for Christmas now, don't you? What's that? Tea Prev. No. No, I wouldn't do that, Tim. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Couldn't resist. Sorry. Jesus, Vic. Hiroshima looked tidier after it got hit with a nuke. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> I will never sub home, says Jackie. <laughs> That's right, I remember that. I do. That was years ago, though. Years ago. Oh, uh, we've all got to... Hold on, I'm going to play something for you. You should be able to hear it if I play it through here, wouldn't you? You were happy with your little Jack Vapor, weren't you, Vic? Yeah, I was. It was a great yeah. little cat. Carry on, I'm just looking for something. Yeah, great little kit, the Jack Vapor stuff. It was, it was a good kit. What was the one that I got? What was the one that I got at Expo, Vic, that was Jack Vapor? Uh, it might have been the Vim. Uh, no, it, um, it, it was the tank. Because you got, yeah, the wee tank, because you'd got oh, the, the... S22. Yes, S22, that was it, the S22. Because right. yeah. you'd, you'd had the wee mod already and you wanted the tank to go with it. That's right. That mod died a death. Um, and. Yeah. But I liked I liked that tank. It was a good wee mouse to long tank at the time. I used to like the DNA so I, I liked that wee mod. The the D what, what was the uh, the it was the one that leaned. Yeah, that's right, yeah. What the hell was the tilt? Was it the tilt? No. No. No, because no, wasn't the tilt the one that used to many bunnies leave on everybody? One after the one after the tilt. Yeah, the, the tilt the tilt was the one that used to drive Rage's OCD batshit and saying, wasn't yeah, it? Because it you know, you'd have it sitting flat, but your tank would be like this. That used to drive Rage's OCD mental. Yeah. No. Um, um how do I get into my iTunes? What? How do I get into my iTunes account? <laughs> A computer updated and there's stuff places that I don't know how to work. Oh, it's moved everything. I fucking yeah. hate when that happens. I just want to get into my library because I've got everything that I want to play. Just for Vic. <laughs> um so you can play music on Twitch then? Yes. You can, you can play whatever you want. Oh, here we go. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but you should. The melon, it's practically impossible to make this thing leak. Oh, <laughs> Are you ready? Take that to your lawyer, and then once your lawyer's read it, go fuck yourself again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I remember actually, that one as well. I had them um, as my notifications on my phone from my, <laughs> oh, from my text and my messages. <laughs> yeah, I, I love those high on videos they were yeah. just fucking hilariously funny oh yeah <laughs> shut up leave a mac alone there's nothing wrong with a mac nothing right with it either <laughs> it works for me oh dear you know you've been willing to take three dogs she's just offended me too fucking much this time <laughs> <laughs> so i'm guessing three dogs not invited to boob island then tandy yeah, did you hear about Tandy's making her own island that we can all go and vape on? Clothes are optional. Um, but the more men, the, the men have to wear shorts, though. They're not allowed to be walking around with their tag alike. They have to at least have a pair of shorts on. Right. <laughs> I'm up for that. I'm up for that as well. I'm quite sure. Yeah, hell no, she's not allowed to go to Boob Island now, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Well, guys, thank you so much. That's us ran a wee bit over time. So, we oh, well, so we have. Yeah, I know. It's been a really good show. So, uh, thank you so much for coming on, Mark. It's been an absolute pleasure having ah, thank you <laughs> i hope it wasn't too traumatic we, we did say that no. we would go gentle on you oh tandy um, has put a link in chat for us to look at apparently this is what three dog is sent her is it eggs so yeah thank you so much for coming on Ms. mark it's been an absolute pleasure having thank you one last darling getting to do a show and a cast with you um, and we're only a week away from Huggles. I know. Can't, Can't wait. wait. Can't wait. Victor, thank you so much. As always, darling, you jump on and you help us out. Love you, and she'll see you next week. Mm -hmm. Plenty of scones and cakes and baking and things like that. Yay! <laughs> Money, thank you so much, honey. Really, as always, love my bitch. Darren, thanks for casting for us, guys. Remember, it is BOE10 on Empire Store for 10% off, and it's I'm a bitch 15 uh, for Big Boy Coils for your 15% off of Shane's Coils. So, thank you very much to our sponsors as well. Thank you to all who have subscribed to us, who have given us bits. And as always, guys, you come in here every week and you support us, and we love you for it. We really appreciate it. If you're going to be at Expo next week, please don't be shy. Come over, say hello, get a cuddle. Um, we, we really aren't that scary. Don't listen to Ivy, she talks pish. Mm -hmm. We really aren't that scary at all. Um, but we really look forward to meeting up and seeing a few of you at Expo as well. Um, so, on that note, I'm going to bow out and let Bunny close us off. Yeah, well, I, I really can't say much more than what Gail has already said. Mark, um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here. Why the fuck we didn't do this sooner, I have no clue. But Definitely thank you back. for joining us tonight anyway. It's been absolutely Enjoy. amazing. Vic, thank you very much for jumping in again, lastminute.com. You always seem to do that with us, but hey, we love yeah. you for it. Uh, all you guys in chat are just epic. And yeah, you're the reason why we turn up every week to do this. We absolutely love you guys. And that's why we're here. And yes, Expo is just under a week away. So by all means, we will see you all there. And don't forget, guys, bring comfy shoes, plenty of water and a bottle of fucking deodorant, please. Yes. That is a must. Yes, deodorant, please. Yes, deodorant. I don't want to cuddle you if you fucking stink. Exactly. There's nothing you know worse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining us. We will, like I say, uh, we won't, this show will not be on for obvious reasons next week, but keep an eye because we may be able to do a, maybe a little like impromptu live from the expo itself on the channel. So just keep an eye out for that. If we can get good enough internet, who knows? Um, you might get a little walkthrough or something. So uh, keep an eye on that. We might pop up over the weekend at some point. But yeah, as Gail has already said, you've got your discount codes for both um, Empire and for Shane's Coil. So don't forget to go and pick up your wee bargains over there. And we will see you all again at Expo. Hard. And for those that we don't see at Expo, we will see right back here at 8 p.m. in two weeks' time. So yes. see you all later, and guys. remember your antibacterial hand shit so you don't get crud. Oh. And your own drip tap. Bring your own drip tap. Your drip tap. Yeah. Preferably two because some people use five tens and some use eight tens. So bring one of each if possible. That's probably a wise option. Yeah. So love you all. Look Thanks after yourselves. Table. We shall see you all soon. Take care. Bye. 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 Guy look like celebrity squares then. <laughs> <laughs>